Alrighty, chat. Welcome to another Healthy Gamer GG stream. My name is Alok Kanoja. Just a reminder that although I am a psychiatrist, nothing we discuss on stream today is intended to be taken as medical advice. Everything is for educational or entertainment purposes only. If y'all have a concern or a question, please go see a licensed professional. Happy Friday, everybody. Um, today we are, we've got an awesome interview with someone else from the Trash Taste podcast. So we will be learning more, maybe about anime, maybe about life, maybe about what kind of taste is trash. Um, I think we're going to be talking with Sea Dog. I, I, we'll f figure out what his name is. I'm not sure exactly what his name is, but we'll figure that out. Um, yeah, so that's going to be fun. We'll hop into that in just a couple minutes. We just have uh, one quick announcement. So we finally actually have personal coaching spots open once again. Um, they've been full for a while. They've been we've been basically full since October of last year, actually, so almost one year. Um, and so, if y'all are interested in sort of like applying the HG approach to your life, I definitely check out personal coaching. So, uh, like, you know, there's a reason it's full. Like, we 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 started out with like eight coaches. We now have over a hundred, and we use evidence based methodologies to help y'all target the challenges that you face today. So a big reason that we developed a coaching program is because I sort of noticed, or it was my belief anyway, that psychiatry couldn't quite keep up with the times. Like we have a lot of great research and stuff, but like the world is just a different place and we need like modern solutions. And so our coaching program is actually sort of has an injection of kind of spiritual approaches. It's not like religious in nature, but I, I kind of took everything I learned as a psychiatrist and everything that I learned as a monk or not, I mean, I wasn't a monk, monk trainee for seven years, and then kind of put them together. And then I, I teach at each and every one of our coaches and also continue to work with them if they've got challenging cases and stuff like that. And we see really good outcomes. So, um, you know, a, a couple of things just to keep in mind, we were featured at the American Psychiatric Association this past year for some of the work that we're doing. Um, you know, we've had various collaborations with other kinds of organizations. We've got a pilot study that hopefully we'll be publishing soon, the results of, and we tend to see like really good outcomes. We, and a big part of that is we focus on things that psychotherapy doesn't really necessarily exclusively focus on. So life purpose is a good example. So if we look at like, well, for example, the number one reason that people get addicted or not reason, but the, the number one risk factor for pornography addiction is actually a sense of meaninglessness in life. So a lot of the challenges that we face are because we don't really like know what we're doing, right? We don't really know what's worth sacrificing for. Everyone's saying I should major in STEM. I don't really like STEM. Is my job going to be replaced by AI? Like, I don't know. So we kind of focus on helping people find their purpose in life. And that helps people do things like overcome addictions. It helps people find motivation. It gives them a reason to kind of get out of bed in the morning because you've got a life worth living. So we see about a 58% improvement in life purpose at about the 12 week mark. And our sample size for that is like over a thousand people, by the way. Um, so it's it's not just like, hey, we we helped like five people and these are our results. So definitely check it out if y'all want. I know people have been on the waiting list for a long time. We had over a thousand people on the waiting list. So there are spots kind of opening up every day. So definitely check it out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's hop in with Sea Dog. <clears throat> okay. Let me do this. Let me do this. Did I just screw it up? Oh, no. Hello. Uh, can you... Hold on one second, okay? I think I just screwed up my headphones. Oh, nope, nope. You came through silky smooth. Good oh, okay, God. good, good. That is silky smooth. Okay, give me one second. I gotta just... I gotta fix this every time we stream. You'd think that we'd be able to figure this out <laughs> at this point. Oh, hey, it works. Is, uh, it's how it goes. You, you have like a temporary fix and you're like, I'll just, I'll just use this every time. Um, yeah, but now it looks like we didn't or something didn't save. Okay. And what do you go by, by the way? I know that no You can just call me Connor. Connor. Okay. So we're going to take, oh, no, no. Do you prefer Dr. K as well? or? Uh, yeah, you can call me Dr. K if you want. A lot of people prefer that because my first name is sometimes hard to pronounce. <laughs> All but, right, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with um, Dr. K then. But you can call me Alok if you want. I, I'm not. Alok? Alok? 
Alok? Okay. Yeah. Alok or Dot yeah. I feel like Dot Decay in the setting makes sense. It sure. feels like an appropriate title. Sure. If what a cool so. title to have. Uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> it's, it's a cool title to have. I'm Ooh. jealous. Why, thank you. And do you have a title in your job? Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, I, uh, people, people like to refer to me as monkey sometimes in the chat. Monkey? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole story. I do tell. Uh, well, uh, I'm often, um, well, I suppose it originated because I don't really, when I listen to music, I expect expressing this on our podcast, that, um, I just, like, I just can't hear lyrics. Like, I listen to the music and I understand like the feeling and the the beat and everything, but I don't I don't take in any of the lyrics. And then they were like, "Oh, you sound like a monkey." I'm like, "Okay, I guess so." And then it's stuck, and everyone calls me it now. Wow, interesting. A any other problems like absorbing language? <laughs> like, are we are we stumbling into an aphasia of some kind? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I I've never thought about it that way. Uh, if you I, try I to understand lyrics, can you understand lyrics, or you you just that's a, that's a <laughs> Huh? That's a great question. No one's oh, ever no. dug that deep. Uh, I, I, I've, yeah, I, it's weird. I can like listen to the the words being said, but when they're when they're being sang in a song, I'm like incapable of attaching any meaning to them for some reason. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. So, but if you try, does it work or it doesn't work even with effort? I should I, I should test this now. <laughs> I'm just curious because you know sometimes people will have. So, do you know what aphasia is? I think I've heard of this, uh, but I'm not. Please familiar, re familiarize me with this. So, so there's like the this. part of your brain that processes words, right? So mm. like the, there, there's this part of our brain called Broca's area, um, which is just a part of our brain that processes words. And and sometimes like people, you know, you'll have like some kind of word processing problem. So mm. sometimes it can result in things like dyslexia. But you know, interesting. But maybe. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Maybe. I, they, I For a long time, when I was in school, they always thought I had dyslexia. We, we're getting into the shit right away. <laughs> wow. Okay. Interesting. But I, I've never, when I've, I mean, also my spelling is terrible as well, but I've never had any, like, when I see people explain, people who are dyslexic explain it to me, I'm like, no, I, I don't have this issue ever. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a weird thing, but I guess maybe I have the traits that make people think I do. Well, so I think one thing to remember is that, you know, when we've got a function in our brain, like let's say language yeah. processing. I think the reason that we're so good at diagnosing dyslexia is because there is a particular way that our language processing can kind of get messed up. Mm. And that can be dyslexia. But there are all these other languaging, language processing potential problems that we just don't have names for or we don't really look for. Right. So, like, I could believe you had something. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, and I'm going to do a literature search after we're done talking today about whether yeah. there are case reports of people who cannot recognize lyrics in songs. Yeah, I, I mean, like, it's I, I can I can understand the English being said, but it's just very very difficult for me to like actually listen to it because then it takes away. I'm not listening to the music then; I'm listening to what they're saying. And it's a completely different experience for me. I don't know how to. Can you yeah, sing along? I, no, most of the time not. Most yeah, of the time not. I mean, like, yeah, I'll know like a line, but I'll never know like I. No matter how many times I listen to a song, it is impossible for me to just from listening only to pick up all the lyrics. It just won't happen. And what about like? Can you sing like? Do you like sing in the shower and stuff? Uh, and if if I do, it'll be like humming or like one line. It'll never be like a. So you can't full... sing like Mary had a little lamb. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know what the rest of it is. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I realize. Yeah, that sounds so strange. <laughs> yeah. I... Uh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that either. I never really looked too much into it. I was like, yeah, I just don't listen to the lyrics. Not not that big of a deal. But now I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I guess I just don't listen to any of it, and I never take any of it in. Yeah, that was not. <laughs> I, anyway, I mean, it could just be. I don't know. It's just weird. It's it's a it's a it's a phenomenon that's uh, this is relatively common, by the way. It's like when I okay, talk to thank people, God. I was like, oh, my there, God, is this some kind of stage three Alzheimer's? Uh, sign no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I mean, you can go talk to a real medical professional at some point if you want. But just just okay, uh, okay. Uh, it, in my experience, like, you know, a lot like we have so many functions in the body, in the brain and the mind. Yeah. Like there's so many things that we do and like everyone's a little bit scuffed in some way. And chances are you can't just you, you can't figure everything out. 
right? Like, so so yeah. most human beings, for example, we don't realize this, but one of our legs is longer than the other. One of our arms is longer than the other. We have like, well, even if you look at the thickness of your two hands, one of your hands is going to be thicker than the other. Look at the wrists and you'll notice that uh, uh, on the yeah, other side, okay. flip them over. Yeah. If you look at the underside, you'll see like one of them is like thicker. Oh yeah. What the heck? <laughs> do you sleep, uh, do you sleep with an arm under your head? I do. Yeah. On the left side. <laughs> uh yes <laughs> yeah so this is kind of crazy so it looks like your right okay. arm is thicker uh i uh, yeah i would say yeah. my right arm is thicker so it's, it's really fascinating right so there's like a masturbation joke here but um <laughs> what 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 it really is is that when you it's kind of crazy but what one person kind of told me right so if we're able to predict that you sleep on your left side with an arm under your that like that's kind of interesting right am yeah, i watching yeah. you while you sleep always a possibility but really what it is, is that if you sleep on your left side and you sleep with your arm under your pillow, that uh -huh. hand will get slightly less blood flow over the course of your life. And so it'll actually grow a, a tiny bit less, which you can notice. Oh, I, but, okay. Well, I didn't, yeah. There are all yeah, kinds of weird stuff. Side, we don't. So I guess that makes sense. Anyway, I know we just kind of jumped into weirdness. Yeah, we did. Wow. Yeah. That was... <laughs> and um, how you're such an unusual human being. My apologies for that. All good. All good. I expect uh, as such. That that's common, but like I said, it's common. That's that's the reason yeah. I pointed out everyone's that way. But is there anything in particular you want to talk about today? Um, no, not really. I've I've never so to fully disclose, I've never done any thought uh, type of uh, therapy or any type of uh, psychiatry or anything like that at all. Um, so I to me, I was like, oh, this I I've watched the show a bunch. I really like what you do, and I was like, I thought it'd be pretty cool because I saw Gaunt go on. Uh, and obviously Gon's a really close friend of mine. And he was like, yeah, it was super fun. And I was like, okay, well, I've never done anything like this. So I'd, I'd be down to try. Sure. So um, just a couple things that I want to sure. make clear. I'm not going to be diagnosing you. For, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So it, and that's not, it looks different. But one thing that I can offer you is that there's something that you want to learn about yourself mm. or learn about a particular mm. topic. We can kind of talk mm. about it. Sometimes people have questions about stuff. Um, yeah. And, and I've spent a couple of years like Garnt studying to become a monk and then became a psychiatrist. So happy to like mm. sort of share any of that information about yeah. something as it relates to your life. Anything that you want um, to talk about or you're interested in learning more about? Um, Honestly, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, there's a few things that I guess uh, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on. Let's um, do it. I'm sure that you've probably had this with, with other people who are in the same profession as me um work-life balance how do sure. i how do i how do i attack that except like, so for me i feel that um right now probably one of my uh i don't know how to explain it i wouldn't say i'm unhappy with it because I, I choose to work as much as i do and I, I work quite a lot uh but sometimes i often feel that like damn i wish i i had more time to hang out with friends but then i also at the same time i'm always thinking like how, how much should i hang out with friends is it just i should hang out with them as much as until i feel satisfied or um, it's so hard for me to, I figure out sometimes. Yeah, of course. Um, so here's kind of what I'm hearing that work-life balance is maybe something you need to learn a little bit more about. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just work a lot. <laughs> okay. And I'm also hearing that you're kind of okay with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I am. I just, I wish that I could somehow figure out my, in my head space of trying to figure out how to navigate okay I, I like working as much as i do but i want to make sure that i'm able to give time to the people that i, I really care about uh and then also i, I i'm also just really bad at saying I'm, I'm okay at saying no i think actually i've got a lot better but sometimes uh I, there's this strange sensation that comes with this job where uh, i guess sometimes people want to hang out and i don't know how to say no sometimes because i'm like i just don't for me it's like okay uh, how do I explain this without sounding <laughs> like like a stuck up asshole? <laughs> like some people, I guess that that some people always want a connection more than you want a connection sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And and that kind of relationship there. And so I, I sometimes struggle if somebody's very nice and friendly and I get on with them well, but I, maybe I'm just not able to give back the same kind of level. I have no idea how to even begin to kind of handle that. Yeah, these are. This is fantastic, Connor. You, you okay? Really? How okay, are you well, feeling I mean, about all this? Do you you doing okay right now? Yeah, I mean, I feel fine about it, and I feel like I'm managing it all. I just feel like I, I, I always think I could do better in everything. 
uh, in terms of, I think it's easy to do that when you're doing something like streaming and YouTube, because you have so much analytics, uh, but obviously in real life, there are no analytics, <laughs> there's no feedback, uh, there's no view counter or something like that, you know what I mean? So you're kind of, you're kind of like hoping that you're just doing the right thing a lot of the time. Uh, and I guess that's where I kind of struggle with. It's like, I'm like, man, I, I, th I think I'm doing the right thing, but sometimes I just don't know. Okay. How do you know whether something is the right thing? <laughs> I knew when I said that you could ask that. Um, I, I don't know. I just feel that my, I, I, my gut just says it's the right thing. And I, I feel like oftentimes I am more willing to give people the benefit of the doubt. So if my gut is telling me, hey, maybe don't, do this or don't spend time with this person it's I, i'm like okay if the if i have that feeling then it's probably something that I, there's some reason why i'm feeling that way if i'm more often than not giving people the benefit of the doubt if that makes sense I don't and know how does that, that work out for you when you give people the benefit of the doubt um uh so, some is fine i mean you know i'm sure you've hung out with someone who you've 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 probably hung out with someone one time and you were like wow they were nice but man there was just no connection there you know what i mean there was no kind of uh, emotional uh, report. I don't know. You know what I mean? There's gonna be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm with you. So, so, so okay. here I asked the question. Okay, yeah. um, and, and Connor, how thick is your skin? Are you like okay if we if I joke around you about can, some you of this stuff? You can dig into me. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I really don't mean you know. I, I it's just this, me. <laughs> for whatever reason we've gotten off on a weird tone for this conversation, and I'm yeah, gonna I'm run sorry, with I'm it. Sorry. I, no, no, I no. It's great. I love it. Okay, okay. I love it. It's just I'm afraid that I'm I'm gonna hurt your feelings at some point if I keep. You can on absolutely hurt my feelings. Okay. Go for it, please do. Okay, but can I rely on you to let me know if I say things that do hurt your feelings? Sure. Yeah. Okay. You, you want me to verbally just tell you? Yeah. Just, just like, like, hey, man, that's okay, a little cool. bit too much. Like. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or you can just say fuck you. That works too. <laughs> okay. So I asked you the question: What? How does it work out for you when you give people the benefit of the doubt? And you said sometimes it's fine. <laughs> Not a ringing endorsement for doing that. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. So I have an idea of what we can talk about today. So okay, I cool, think cool. we're going to help you understand what's on the inside. Like, that would who be, is Connor? Be great. Because what I'm sort of getting the sense of is that there's a part of you that you judge as an asshole. And like the part of you that yeah. doesn't want to hang out with people and doesn't want to do these particular things. And then there's another part of you that's like, you know what? We shouldn't be that way. We should yeah, have absolutely. faith in humanity. Yeah, yeah. And so we should take that part of us and we don't want to give in to the part of us that does not like hanging out with other people. <laughs> um, I, I guess so. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I, yeah. That's a very bizarre way of putting it. It might get some in my head. But yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, there's definitely an I, asshole side. I think I think you need an asshole side. I don't know if I'm correct in thinking that way, but I think there's yeah. a part of you that needs to have that. Yeah, tell me about that. Why, why do you need an asshole side? <laughs> Sorry, that was such a fun question that you phrased it that way. No, I mean, I think we're getting into good stuff because people don't talk like this, right? We don't acknowledge that there's a part of us that sometimes yeah. we, we kind of, there's a lot of self judgment. And, and so, what do you think it does for you to kind of set limits yeah. around people? Yeah, I, I, I would love to entirely blame all of the job for being like, oh, it's just, it's all, all the jobs. But I mean, it's obviously not. That's not where it comes from. But uh, I think because, from from doing streaming and all the stuff and we're interacting with so many people so often um i just feel that uh oh man it sounds it sounds like such a it's such a stuck up thing to say but i guess generally people want to hang out like uh when this <laughs> kind of stuff more with me than i want to with other people just because there's a lot more people i interact with um and i i guess that asshole side is kind of like a way of having some form of like inner protection or sign of like okay i'm just gonna only uh allow or just kind of give my time to people i feel that are gonna uh have good intentions or uh will kind of um, have meaningful friendships i guess in a, in a way um but that's a hard part making any meaningful friendships is also really tough um, yeah but I, I feel like i'm still okay at it yeah uh, so if you you said that you'd like to blame the job entirely yeah but you can't so yeah i, I if yeah, it's not, i think if you can't blame the job then where where does that come from? Um, I, yeah, that's probably just, <laughs> I guess, from from me, uh, from uh, my entire existence. Um, I, I think I was not very extroverted growing up. Mm -hmm. Became a lot more extroverted from uh, after university or during university. 
Uh, and then now lately, I really feel like I'm kind of slowly, I'm getting more introverted traits again. Uh, I'm finding it sometimes where I used to get really excited to hang out with people. I guess sometimes uh, now, if I hang out with certain people where I feel like I just, I don't know, it's it's not as fun as it used to be for whatever reason. I find it a lot more draining. Um, yeah. And not as kind of satisfying and kind of like, I guess the recharging of the battery is, is the uh, the analogy a lot of people yeah. use. I, and Connor, I, I know we're kind of being a little bit memeish here, but I, I don't get the sense that you're an asshole at all. I, I get the sense oh, okay. that sometimes... Um, other people want to hang out and for them it's fun and for you it sounds yeah. like sometimes it's a chore yeah and i don't know really i don't really know how to explain that to someone and be like hey i just don't want to <laughs> right now for whatever reason whether it's i want to focus on work for that particular day or i want to do something else or maybe i just don't get on with this person as well as maybe they think we do or something like that can so happen. what what do you can you give me an example of what someone may say to you uh, well, to just hang out. Or yeah, anything. yeah. I guess. Oh I guess some God. people. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like people who I'm kind of friendly with, and and they're, yeah. they're, you know I have so, sort of good, uh, uh, good relationship with, and and maybe I, I like it when I, I see them, but I, I wouldn't want to be like <laughs> stuck in a room with them for like four or five hours, you know. Tell me uh, and so they'd be like, "Hey, let's let's get dinner or something," uh, and then I'm kind of like, "Oh, the the general excuses are no, I'm sorry, I, I'm busy," which is which is true. But sometimes maybe I allow it to be uh, allow it to kind of carry more weight than it than it actually has. Yeah, do you, have you know kids? we can move stuff around in this job a lot of the time. Um, you have kids. I don't. Luckily, yeah. yeah. So if if you've got kids, it's the ultimate excuse. Yeah, sorry, you can like always. I, I'll, I'll just get a kid real quick. I'll yeah. just go. I'll... You can just. It works great. And so they'll say like, "Hey, like you want to hang out sometime?" And and how do you how do you feel when they ask you that? Like, what happens internally? Oh, I feel I feel awful, like because I, I know I want to socialize and I want to hang out with people, but I, I and I know that I would most likely have a decent time or a fun time, but it's just kind of hard for me to sometimes uh, really, uh, I guess, kind of, I don't know how to describe. It. Yeah, it's tough. I, I I just feel bad and I I hate feeling bad and I I don't know why I feel bad about it. I mean, I guess I feel bad because I didn't meet someone's expectation in a certain way. Or whatever it is, yeah. Which I guess the whole other thing. <laughs> well, what kind of thing is that? Tell me about that thing. Well, I, you know, I, I feel like I just, you know, I, I feel like it's a general human thing where you're like, I, I, it'd be nice if people like me, but also I don't, I don't need them to. But I guess if it's somebody I kind of am friendly with or I trust, I, I kind of don't want to disappoint people who are close to me, uh, or I, I like in that way. It can be really tiring to socialize if meeting other people's expectations is, yeah. is important to you. Right? Yeah. Cause it's like, then you're like, you're not doing it there. You're like, now I have to, it's almost like you're getting tested, right? It's like, okay, now yeah. I'm here in this situation and now yeah, I got like, I'm hitting the bingo card. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm hitting like the bingo sheet of, uh, of like things I'm saying, but it's fine. Don't... What, what do you mean by that? What, what's on the bingo oh, card? Just, I'm, I'm just like, Oh yeah. I'm a people please. I'm a YouTuber. Yeah. 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 This is... <laughs> what else? <laughs> Tell me what's on the bingo card. No, 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 no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. No, okay. Carry on. I interrupted you, please. No. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it sounds kind of tiring, right? And you say feels bad. So another yeah. thing that's kind of interesting is that, um, men have something called normative male alexithymia. Okay. So alexithymia means color blindness to your internal emotional state. Okay. Okay. And we call it normative male alexithymia because it is normal for men to be alexithymic. So mm. we're raised in a particular way where we're not really taught what we feel. So we're not yeah. taught to articulate our emotions. And so then if I ask you, how does it make you feel? You're like, I feel bad. <laughs> Me not like feeling bad. <laughs> Right? That's pretty much the gist. Yeah, it, it, I, I don't know how to yeah, properly articulate it. Yeah, no, and, and that's okay. Like that's it, it, it's actually normal. Like so, there's like mm -hmm. research on how this is like the normal experience of men, and then it puts us in kind of a weird situation because we feel like you kind of feel bad if you say no, right? Yeah. And then if you say yes, do you also feel bad? Sometimes, not not all the time. It, it just depends how it goes yeah, really, right? and, and what else I have going on. But is that the same badness that you feel if you say yes or you say no? Um, I don't think so. I think it's different. I think it's yeah. different. Yeah, what's different about the two? Uh, <laughs> um, I yeah, I guess the 
sometimes if the if the if I say no to someone, it's more of like I guess we said earlier, like disappointment or kind of feeling like I'm I'm not meeting someone's expectation for whatever reason. Uh, and then I guess if I say yes, it feels bad. Sometimes I'm like, okay, this is going to be. Sometimes it can be quite draining, or kind of a lot. Um, and it, and yeah, I guess it's tough because then I'm, I also think in my head, I'm like, man, I have some really close friends that I, I don't get to see as much, and I feel bad that I'm not hanging out with them when I, I'm hanging out with someone I you know just met or something. I, I don't know. I I feel like there's this weird part of my brain that feels like I yeah I don't know. I should hang out with people who are closer to me more often than people I, I'm just meeting. But I, I don't think that makes any sense, but I don't know why I feel that way. Yeah, so so good. So, I mean, not, not good. Good in the sense <laughs> that this, this is a great place to start. So yeah. what I'm noticing, uh, Connor, is that you actually have a quite a, like, like the inside of you is a robust city. Mm. It's a metropolis of different oh, wow. pulls and pushes and feelings and shoulds. Okay. Right? I should hang out with my friends more. Yeah. And then I also should make new friends. Yeah. But I don't want to do any of that today. I just want to go home. Yeah. Maybe yeah, watch a little happen. bit of anime. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that's yeah. just what you feel like doing. And, and so I, I'm kind of noticing that that it's actually like, not not that you're, it sounds like you've got everything under control, right? So you're like doing well. I feel like well. you've got everything under control. Yeah. 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 Like you're doing well in life. Yeah. But... It's like there's this kind of one slice of the pie that is Connor. That's mm. maybe a little bit out of sorts. Yeah. And, and I'm also getting the sense that, I don't know if this, it, so let me know if this resonates with you, but that you're kind of like a ping pong of like vague, bad feelings on the inside. That if you do this, the you kind of feel mm. bad in this way. And then if you don't do that, you feel bad in this way. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. That, that can often happen. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you add any color to that? Like, can you give us an example of how you felt that way or anything kind of jumped to your mind? It's a hard um, question because I'm kind of dumping it on you, but no, 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 it's fine. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I guess I guess it's mainly with the social stuff, I guess, but I suppose I'm trying to get better at, so I feel like I'm, I'm strong in social situations and I understand social situations very well. Uh, and I, I enjoy being in them sometimes, but yeah, just as of, uh, as of late, I suppose maybe I've been, uh, that's why I feel that way. And then, Maybe there's someone who, uh, uh, which I, 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 I guess I, I don't do this normally because I, I really like, um, being reliable, uh, and, uh, I guess, uh, uh not uh, like a while ago, like a month or two ago, I, if I, if I scheduled to hang out with someone, I'm always going to show up. It's never not going to happen. Um, but then I guess one time, like a month ago, I was like, I, I just messaged them. It was like a fair amount. It was like a week before. So it was still a decent amount of time. I was like, Hey, I just... I just don't don't think I have time for this. But I, I you know, I, I I did have time, but I just really didn't want to be there, and I felt awful doing that. But already agreed to do something, and then I went back on it, and I feel that that's just like a I don't know. I hate going back on when I agreed to do something. I really hate it. What do you hate about it? Um, I think, uh, I I think being reliable as a person is a very uh trait that I I. I like to hold myself, uh, and then I'm, then I'm kind of, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, the, I guess I'm, I'm, I like to be reliable because I've been around a lot of people, uh, who have not been reliable and it's very frustrating uh, and it's very, I'm sure everyone can relate when they have that one friend, but they know is always reliable regardless of the situation. It's just always great to have around and, and great to be a part of their life. Uh, and so I, I like to think that by being a reliable person, uh, not only do I uh, make my life easier, but also I can then enrich uh, the the lives of people around me by just yeah. being a reliable person. Sounds like a win-win situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. obviously, sometimes it, it sucks because you agree to things. You're like, I didn't want to do that. But, you know, I think that it's more important to, to be reliable and do something than just always uh, flake or not show up to things or not do things when you promised or miss deadlines. Uh, like, I, I don't think I've I've ever missed deadlines or done anything like that. I, I always make sure I do everything on time. How do you feel about that? Um, I, I, I guess I like, I like that I, I feel I'm responsible. I don't know if everyone around me feels the same way, uh, but I, I like that, uh, I don't know. I, I, get, I guess there's uh, some, some form of uh, pride from being a reliable person, I suppose. Some, I mean, do you feel pride? You like proud of yourself? Like there's a reliable guy right there. <laughs> 
I only only when you work when you sometimes you work with someone and they're they're so unreliable where you're like wow I, i'm doing the bare minimum constantly <laughs> like i'm showing up and i'm doing uh i'm, I'm being a part of things and i'm when I say I'm going to turn up or I say I'm going to be there on this time, I always show up on that time. Uh, and I, I don't know why I feel that way, but I guess it's just I've been, maybe I've just been <laughs> scarred from everyone around me who I've worked with at some point. Is, is Not everyone, but like a bunch of people who've been pretty unreliable. And, and when did you start encountering unreliability in your life? Oh, I, absolutely. When I, uh, uh, mainly when I started doing YouTube, 100%. That was when it, I started realizing that I was like, oh, wow. So many people just just don't care. Can you, do you feel comfortable sharing a story about that? Does anything like come to mind? I'm, we're yeah, not trying I mean, to like one, crap talk yeah, there's, anyone. There's, but... there's, there's one good story I, I have that um uh I guess I can I can really summarize it. Uh, so when I started doing YouTube, um there was a my my chat's gonna be like aware the emote. Sorry if they, when they know this one, it's a pretty bad story. So um I. I Started off my YouTube and I, I did this these kind of parody anime videos where I would prank call places as an anime character. Let's not get into that. <laughs> Whole host of weird. So I used to do these, where I would pretend to be this character and I would, I would call. Uh, and then after a while of doing these videos, I kind of realized, I was like, oh, it'd be kind of fun if I could bring in uh, more people who um, could voice some of the other characters that I can't voice to kind of be a part of these videos. Uh, this is a different time. It was 2015, so... <laughs> I don't think you'd you'd see a lot of this nowadays. Um, and so I was working with this this um, this guy, and, and he was just always super unreliable. We'd schedule times, wouldn't show up, would would uh, you know not reply for a week or two. Uh, would then turn around and kind of ask for money for being in a YouTube video, even though they were making their own YouTube videos. And I, I was it was just a whole weird situation. Um, and they were just constantly unreliable, uh, so much to the, the point where I was like, I never want to be this to someone else. Um, that person also went on to, to do some horrible stuff and get arrested for um, uh, child, aggravated child molestation. Uh, yeah, so uh, there, that, that, yeah, that's all. <laughs> so that kind of scarred me a lot. I was like, I, did, I did don't even remotely want to be this kind of person in any capacity. Uh, but I was always a reliable person before that. But I think when I got into YouTube, I realized from working with, with that creator and a bunch of other creators at the time and a few other um, people in the same kind of industry, I was just I was just so tired of working with people who just would say one thing and, and never deliver on it. Yeah, sounds like an absolute mess. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was terrible. It yeah. was uh, a whole, whole ordeal. Uh, at the time as well, I... Uh, it was kind of bad, really, because I, I wasn't making a lot of money from YouTube. I, I was making like a comfortable amount to pay my rent and, and kind of still have a nice life. Um, but when that all happened, I just removed all the videos with that person. So then I lost like uh, like a third of my entire YouTube backlog at the time. So that was kind of like a really tough hit to take. But I, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of gross. So I, I didn't want to be a part of it. And um, do you mind if I ask a little bit about your upbringing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. <laughs> My parents are super chill. They were super great. Uh, yeah. I was where, very fortunate. Where did you grow up? I grew up in, uh, do you know Wales in the UK? Uh, vaguely. I mean, I know there's yeah, a so place I, called Wales. There's a, yes, it's a, one of the countries in the United Kingdom, uh, 3 million population. And uh, I went to a, a Welsh speaking school. So I would always have to speak Welsh. Uh, and if we didn't speak Welsh, we'd, we'd get detention or some other kind of punishment. So I would always, and I did all of my schooling and exams up until the age of 18 as I went to university. It was all in Welsh, which I, I at the time, I really, really didn't didn't like because I felt that I was just dumber because <laughs> I didn't understand this language as well as I understood English. Um, although I was speaking it every single day and I, I've known both languages as long as I can remember. Um, and they're very different languages, but I, I just always found that I, I liked using English more uh, so that was like a whole thing. That's a, I'm just going into too much detail now. What, what's too much detail about it? I guess I'm just explaining the entire intricacies now I of Welsh it. education. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you had like a, a Welsh medium school. Is that? Uh, yeah. 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 And, so everyone, everyone speaks Welsh all the time. And, and what did you hate about that? I just hated that I, it felt that I was being restricted for no reason. At the time, I felt that I could learn more and learn faster in English. 
um, for example, um, we'd learn topics and stuff, and then if I wanted to learn more about it, uh, I would have to try and figure out what it all was in English and then research it in English because there's no there was no Welsh internet at the time. Um, is there a Welsh so, internet now? There is. It's it's Google, but it's G W G L. Um, it's Welsh Google, but it's terrible. Like you just don't, you just don't get anything of, of value because the, the you know it's a, it's a language that's only spoken by sixteen percent of the population. So it's a very very um, it's it's not dying because it's it's growing in number, but yeah, it's it's kind of a uh, not so widely spoken. So it's a bit a bit harder to find stuff about it. And I felt that I was doing worse in school because I just didn't understand the words uh, as well as I understood them in English. And that was very frustrating. Uh, but that was really the only only like frustrating part of school. Um, the generic yada 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 got bullied a little bit, but uh, you know it's fine. And and um. So it sounds like you were sort of being forced to learn in a language that it, it, it sounds like you're playing on hard mode. Like you just wanted to learn this yeah. stuff and people are like, learn yeah. it in this language. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause you know, when I, when I'd go home, uh, my dad can't speak Welsh. So we always spoke English at home. So it was always kind of a weird thing really where for this set hours of the day, I would learn everything in this language. And then my, and my normal life outside of it was just all in English. And so it was really hard sometimes translating. And I remember distinctly when I went to, uh, I did my engineering degree in um, in English. And I, I I was in the class and they were talking about some like really basic concepts. So at the time I never learned the English words for them. And I remember feeling like, oh my God, I'm, this is gonna be a lot harder than, <laughs> than I realized because now I have to learn all the English words for all the concepts I understood in another language. Um, and that was kind of a an interesting moment. Um, but it was, it was, it was, you know, looking back on it, I'm I'm very happy that I learned everything in Welsh and I went to a Welsh speaking school because, you know, I think I, something I couldn't appreciate when I was younger is that all the culture is tied to the language and being able to speak the language allows you to be more in touch with the culture. And, you know, I'm very proud of that now. But at the time, I absolutely hated it. How did you how did you cope with that? Man, I would spend all my time online uh, and speaking to Americans as much as possible, <laughs> speaking to other people in English. I would just go online and I would, I would spend all my time talking online. Absolutely. If my kid was doing what I was doing, I would not let them go on, online. What, why uh, I, was just, I was just talking to like 30 year old men from like America when I was like 15. And I just thought, oh, yeah, this is this, this is cool. I'm, I'm so cool. <laughs> And I'm like, no, this guy's so creepy. What are you doing, Connor? <laughs> I mean, were they creepy though? I mean, no, no, never, never. Yeah. And even if they did, I, 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 I was a little shit as a kid. There was no way I was gonna fall for any anything anyone tried to pull on me. Uh, I was, I was a, I was a little nuisance as a yeah, kid. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think thirty year old men on the internet get a bad rap. To be honest, <laughs> I think, I think most of us are like pretty decent human beings. Like, I no, remember. I, I, I agree. I agree. I, I remember, like, I was playing. I, I uh, do you do you play games? Of course, yeah, I love games. W what do you play? Uh, right now, I've been playing a lot of chess. Um, okay. Oh shit! I One of these gamers. Well, gamer. I tell you, recently, I, I was in a chess tournament recently, and I got kind of hooked back into it. But I used to be very addicted to League of Legends, and that was something okay. that I had to. Um, I was very fortunate because <laughs> I, I, I think it was safe to say that I was I was addicted to that game for sure. I mean, I've been addicted to gaming uh pretty much my entire life and i feel like only recently have i kind of had a more of a healthy uh grasp on gaming uh but uh, definitely in my entire childhood and uh in my early adult i was absolutely addicted and league was oh my god it was terrible um i feel like a like a, a recovered addict that i don't play league anymore yeah so uh, mainly because i moved to japan and the servers were so goddamn bad uh and you were just playing against smurfs so there was no fun anymore so i just stopped nice good that was it, great it sounds like japan has given you so many things it's, it's helped a lot and now i play a little bit of tft if you don't know what that is if you don't yeah. good don't, uh, don't don't play it um and, and do you speak any japanese by the way yeah i speak conversational japanese okay so enough to have a fun broken conversation um but i yeah i haven't gone beyond that unfortunately okay um yeah so so hmm can i think for a second Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. I love it when you do this in the videos. What do you love about it? It's just so cool. It's to, to be like, let's halt. Let's think. I have, it's such a commanding presence. I love it. I'll, I'll let you go. I'll let you think. I'll let you think. Thank you.
Okay. So like Connor, you're you're like you're pretty happy, right? Yeah, I'd say I'm I'm the happiest I've I'm now than I've ever been, I think. Okay. Um so like out of everything that we've talked about, is there something in particular that you is there somewhere in particular that you want to take this conversation? Um I don't I don't know <laughs> I, I don't I think that's the the issue I have and I think going back to the the term you said earlier about being able to explain the internal feelings I, I yeah I just don't even know I, I know how I feel and sometimes I can normally figure out why I feel that way but there's equally times where I feel something and I know that I feel that way and I I, I can't figure out why or I'm ignoring why for some for whatever reason and would, um, would you like that to change yeah, I'd, I'd love to have more, I feel like I would love to have more, like, command over how I'm feeling and being able to understand it and better kind of interpret that and, and taking, and more importantly, taking steps to improve it, which is something that I'm, I often will realize the issue I, I could have, and sometimes I'll be like, well, it's not really a problem, so I'll just deal with it. Okay, and, and what is, if you had more command over this, we can absolutely <laughs> do. What what would be the effect that you're looking for? How are you imagining that your life would change? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I guess that there was no objective. I just I feel that sometimes I just want to uh, I I just want to keep improving as a person in whatever capacity, without purpose, but just to improve to be I guess better, and and I guess I also really 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 want to be someone who's when uh, like enriching uh my friends the people i care about uh i want to make sure that w if they're around me or spending time with me that it, it they get something out of it or they it kind of yeah it's like a i don't know why why i guess because i have some friends who do it for me and i really really appreciate uh those friends a lot i feel like they're just such great people and add nothing but like positive uh, energy and vibes to my life i'd love to be able to be that person for people as well and maybe i do but maybe i just don't appreciate it or maybe i don't and i i'm an idiot for thinking i do you know i i, I just want to be able to be a positive influence okay and i'm gonna i know you kind of answer this but i'll just ask one once again sure what makes you want to be a positive influence um I guess I don't. <laughs> I guess I don't know the exact answer to that. I guess okay. uh, maybe there's something deep down I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, no. We're, we're gonna. So, so we're gonna learn a couple things today. Okay. okay I have no okay. idea if, how much of this is relevant to you, but I, I think I've, I've got kind of something going here. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Can I have another second to think? Absolutely, absolutely. Please. Okay. So when when you're reliable, mm. right, and people can count on you, you said that's a win-win. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. I'll it, be honest. I love I love being relied on. I don't know why. Yeah. What what, what <laughs> why do you think that is? I, don't, I I honestly don't know. I think. Um. I yeah. I mean, I I, I definitely feel like, especially with like towards my parents and stuff like that. I. Uh, They've always, they've always, always helped me out so much, and I, I just want to be able to be that for. Sorry, I don't know why I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> um, yeah, they've been, been such a positive influence in my life. I'd love to do the same to them. Sorry. <laughs> ah, sorry. Why are you apologizing? <laughs> ah, I, I hate crying on camera. I hate doing it. Do you like crying off camera? I, I actually really like it off camera. Yeah. <laughs> what makes it hard to cry on camera? I don't know. I, I don't. Cause I, <laughs> I think I think I've watched too many YouTubers that have cried so much on camera. Like I hate to meme it up, but I know that it's the meme of like Markiplier crying on camera, and it's just such a meme that <laughs> to me it feels so disingenuous, or at least it can be seen as disingenuous. Even I know I know it isn't for me, but I know sometimes it can be. So I'm noticing, like I, I don't know if, if you kind of noticed this, but like you think a lot about other people. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What's up with that? Is is that is that not normal? Is that people not think about other people? Do you, do you wish it was different? I I don't think I do. 
No. Why not? I, I don't know. I, I feel that, at least in my mind, I don't. Uh, I think about a lot of. I think about other people, but I never do it at the cost of myself. At least I don't think I do. But maybe it's hard to determine that uh, what the what cost is. But I feel that I I give as much as I can without spreading myself thin, uh, and I try to be uh, as reliable as I can without committing to too much and burning myself out. Uh, at least I try to. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know why. Yeah, so I, I think there's 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 something here. So first of all, like you're doing good, okay? So I'm not trying to make a mountain yeah. out of molehill. I'm not trying to say, "Oh my God, Connor, you're like you're so messed up yeah. and broken on the inside." So please don't take it that way. I think you you yeah. are a prime example of a man. So okay. you're like, or just a human, even right? So you're like yeah. a dude who has like forged his own destiny in the world, and yeah. you are like reliable, and you are. You know, you're like a good dude and you like you give time for yourself and you're not like one of these people who's like a toxic dude who like a to there's no toxicity, right? You're toxicity mm. free. Yeah, try to be. Uh, try to be. And <laughs> and then I play League of Legends, so I can't I can't say I'm <laughs> fair enough, but you're you're in recovery now, right? Yeah, I'm in recovery, I'm in recovery. Right. So but but I, I, I think what I'm kinda noticing is that that I, I do think that there's some stuff here that's a little bit unusual. Or not yeah. unusual is actually quite normal, but a couple things that we could maybe optimize a little bit. So first sure. thing is is I, I kind of get the sense that you know you want to enrich the lives of others because that's like the opposite of like being an asshole, right? Like you want people to like you want to be like a good human, yeah, like not a yeah. bad human. And you've seen both, yeah. and you've been inspired by some, and you get kind of yeah. emotional, and then whatever. So. The other thing is that when we go back to being reliable for a second, you kind of say it's a win-win because it yeah. benefits you and it benefits them. Yeah. Right. But I, I think it also like it costs you something. Mm. Right. So there's like a win-win, but there's a part of you that like loses. <laughs> Does that make sense? Y yeah. I, I, yeah. I can definitely feel that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think is going on there? Can you, can you describe that at all or share what your experience of that is like? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you can agree to do stuff that maybe is just an inconvenience to your schedule or what you're currently doing, or maybe you have to push other things around. And I guess it's, is it debatable if you're being reliable, if you're pushing someone else to another uh, or renegotiating a time with someone else? Um, and so I think, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely guilty of like, sometimes, uh, <laughs> I, I would get, maybe, yeah, I guess I do sometimes give, like, I'll wake up at, 3 a.m. to do something if I'm one I mean I'm passionate about it but I also want to be reliable and show up to something when it's I'll be absolutely tired but I just want to be a part of something or I want to be reliable uh, for that kind of thing um so I'm definitely guilty of ruining my sleep schedule to be reliable sometimes um yeah yeah but what, what uh, I mean is kind of like like I don't know if this kind of makes sense but you have to have a, like I, an emotional I don't kind of feeling well like it's it's like you have to have a good enough excuse yeah. to not be reliable yeah that's true right? that's true that's which true. if you stop and think about it means that there's a part of you that just doesn't want to do it yeah yeah i think that's fair yeah and like where does what about that do what about that connor what, yeah i don't know because because i don't when people if they just tell me a, a reason that like oh sorry i can't hang out tomorrow i i got this going on i'm i rarely rarely do i ever get upset about it or care that much about it i'm like okay yeah that makes sense so I don't know why I don't then give myself that benefit of the doubt that I give other people when they do it. I don't know why I don't do that. Yeah. So I, I genuinely don't know. I'll tell you why. So I think there's one thing you got to work on. So yeah. this is also common for men. Yeah. So when, when dudes feel emotions, mm. if I feel ashamed of myself yeah. for, let's say, being overweight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what's funny? No, sorry. I just, I just—it's such a, a bizarre. I've never, I've never spoken about this stuff before, so it's just all new to me. Sorry. Okay. Cool. No, no, it's fine. It's just a, usually when people laugh like that, there's some kind of sometimes there's an emotion. Are you feeling something right now? No, 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 no. Okay. It's fine. It's okay. fine. So if I feel ashamed of myself because let's say yeah. I'm overweight, how can I deal with that shame? Okay. <laughs> this feels like a trick question. It it's a trick question. Well, obviously, I think the, the low-hanging fruit would be like, oh, just just lose weight and exactly. feel better, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. How is that a trick question? 
what's the trick there well i i feel like the the the, the reason why you feel unhappy of being overweight is it's not it's not so straightforward as always just being just lose weight or something like that there's always a lot more to it no i mean so so that's the problem is that there isn't more to it yeah, oh okay <laughs> right so so this is this is kind of weird like when you feel guilty for letting someone down what do you do to deal with the guilt um i don't know i just deal with it i guess i just carry on maybe yeah. I, I guess i well yeah i so so e even even more so what do you do so like this is the wild thing is that you don't even let yourself feel the guilt because you act in a way so that you do not have to feel guilty i do do that yes I do so do like that. think about that for a second okay yeah what does that mean for your life if you are taking actions to avoid guilt hmm i guess i've always associated guilt as being uh, having no positive effects on one's life. So I've always considered avoiding guilt as kind of avoiding doing wrong. Yeah. So a couple of things really interesting about that. First of all, if guilt has no positive effect, why do you think human beings feel guilt? That's true. <laughs> guilt is a good good kind of uh, moral uh, <laughs> kind of fixing tool, I suppose. Serves a function, right? In, in modern yeah, society, yeah. we think about some emotions as negative emotions. Yeah. is not serving a function. Whereas what we actually know is that guilt and shame are the strongest inducers of behavioral change. That's why yeah, they feel yeah, so bad. So our brain yeah. is like, if we can make us feel bad, we don't want to repeat the behavior. If we can make mm -hmm. us feel good, we do want to repeat the behavior. This is how people get addicted yeah. to legal legends because it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, yeah. so what I'm kind of pointing out, though, is that that if you sort of think about it, like you you live your life in some ways in the avoidance of guilt. Yeah, I think I'm guilty of doing that. Yeah. Right. And and then like the interesting. But that's kind of weird because that sort of means like you're not in control of your life. I guess so. Bam. Yeah, that's I didn't think about it that way. Help me understand what makes sense to you or and it doesn't have to make sense. You're allowed to disagree. Just like mm. what, what what do you think about that? Um, I guess I had never even remotely considered that possibility, which I guess I don't know what that says about my ability to kind of judge myself, but it means you're a normal um, human, by the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's get that. I'm glad I got that good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I would I'd be inclined to agree with you. I think that I do have a tendency to do everything in my power to avoid feeling guilt or guilty in any way. Um, and I don't know why. It's, it's not just, well, yeah, that's because uh, we'll get to why in a second, okay? Yeah. And it's not just guilt, right? Yeah. So people have had a very positive impact in your life. Yeah. And how does that make you feel? Um, I mean, I guess I just feel grateful uh, mostly um, about it, uh, but also would love to be able to have that impact on, on other people as well. I don't know why. Yeah, so um, so I'll toss out another word. What about indebted? Yeah, I I okay, yeah. That is <laughs> that is definitely something I I I do think about a lot is that I never want to feel that I I owe more to other people. Yeah, so Connor, this is big, man. So okay. if you never want to feel a particular way, what does that mean about your life? What do you have to do to avoid feeling indebted? I have to just give a lot more of myself than I guess I Absolutely. Can. And bro, yeah. if someone gives you a lot, yeah. like what what does that mean? That means you gotta give more. Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess is why it comes from the this all loops back to the whole social thing of kind of not wanting to maybe connect with some people because I feel like, oh God, I'm gonna have to there's definitely this indebted feeling I'm going to feel. Yeah, like, uh, oh, my God, this person is so nice and they want to be my yeah. friend. Yeah. And if they want to be my friend, I should want to be their friend. And even if I don't yeah. want to be their friend, I'm not going to let myself not want to be their friend. And if I can come yeah. up, there's a part of me that doesn't want to be their friend. I'm just tired. I want to go home and watch some anime. <laughs> But unless I can come up with a good enough reason to disappoint them, that's yeah. the only way you get what you want. Is yeah. if you can yeah, come up with a, 
right? And like yeah. this is kind of weird because what the what this means. How are we doing so far? Is this okay? You doing okay? Yeah, this is fine. Okay. This okay. is great. I, okay. I, I, I'm learning more about myself than I... So, so th <laughs> this is the before. weird thing, though. Like, I, I want you to really think about this, that the way you manage your emotions is through actions. You shape Absolutely. your environment yeah. Yeah. to prevent yourself or create particular feelings. Mm. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I do that. Which means what's in control of your life? Uh, I guess I'm I'm not in control of my life. I guess I'm at the the whim of that feeling of not wanting guilt, especially controlling what I'm doing. I mean, Absolutely. My, yeah. Right. So now this is the yeah. weird thing. And this is what we see. It's like that's the ping yeah. pong ball. It's like you're going to feel guilty in one way if you do something. You're going to feel guilty, and then you're like, ah, how do I avoid this? Why does yeah. everything have to be a lose lose situation when it comes to socialization? Yeah. Yeah. And and so Absolutely. like I know it sounds kind of weird but let's teach you a different way is it possible for to. you to have emotions and not need to fix them and it's not just the negative emotions that you fix you even you can't sit with gratitude mm -hmm. you can't just say like you gotta you gotta do it back right yeah it's like tag you're <laughs> it true. no you're it yeah yeah that's true C can you just say hey mom and dad like thank you so much. like what would it feel like if you just i mean have you ever told your parents how grateful you are and like yeah, yeah, I've told them a bunch. Yeah, and is that enough? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that, th I think they're just, um, they're just happy to see how I'm doing. You know, they don't need anything. They just want to see that I'm doing okay. Yeah, and how are you with that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to say that that is like, <laughs> obviously, as like a son, you just wanna, you wanna like do as much as you can for your parents, right? Especially if they've done a lot for you. And I guess I'm constantly trying to feel like, how can I do more there, you know? Right, because um, if you do more, then what what will change emotionally? Uh, I guess I'll... <laughs> the, the, the debt. The, the debt, yeah, I guess that's fair. Yeah. Right? That's true. It, it's I think I'm just, like, subconsciously paying off, like, the debt of <laughs> being a kid. You, yeah. Didn't think about that. It's so strange. Wow. Oh! Damn, <laughs> I didn't think about that. How do you That's feel? So crazy. Like, yeah. What do you? What's it's happening? It's kind of overwhelming in a way to think about it like that, but it's kind of. I mean, it's awesome as well. It's kind of it's kind of liberating in a way to hear yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um. Yeah. I just, yeah. I want to be a good son, <laughs> but I think there's the indebtedness and also. But you know, I just I just love them so much. So. Yeah, of, of course, too. of course. Yeah. Are you a good son? I think so. I I would say I am. I'd say I yeah. No, I no, I am. I am a good son. Yeah, you're damn right. You're a good son. <laughs> so then why do you need to try so hard? I don't know. I don't know. Right? I, yeah. So you see what I mean? So I, I think that like so this is the thing, Connor. There, this is what we don't understand is that you are not monolithic. There's like hmm. different things inside you. There's a part of you that knows that you've made your parents proud. Mm. There's a part of you that knows you're a good son. And yet, even though you know you're a good son, you like, it's not enough. You want to be yeah. like a yeah. better son. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just always feel like I can do better in everything. So I think that's like a a blessing and a curse at times. Um, yeah. Because I can never let myself just be like, oh, yeah, I'm... I'm pretty good at this. I'm like, nope, I can always get better. Which I think is, is a good mentality to have on a lot of things, but also sometimes I wish I would just cut myself a break. But well, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. And and why do you think that is? And and, and you're able to th think about it for a second and, and see if we can kind of connect the dots. Mm. Why can't you cut yourself a break? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so I'll... I have this massive adv adv aversion to um, feeling of laziness for whatever reason. How long have um, you had that massive aversion to laziness? Um, probably. I feel like it, I I've had it a little bit, but it was kind of when I moved to Japan is where it really kicked in, uh, and I felt like it really started to. I really started to, um, for perspective, you know, when I used to. Uh, work on my videos and just anything in life 
I would just work on stuff or I would do just enough of everything. If I didn't like it for school, I would do just enough to be able to get uh, good grades and where I felt was like a reasonable amount of it, like in input for the output that I wanted. Uh, and I would do no more. And anyway, I was kind of the same with like, when I started doing YouTube initially as well, I was very passionate about it. But there was still the kind of this limit that I would get to where I'd be like, okay, I can only put this much work in it. And then I would kind of be like, all right, I'm done. Uh, and I'd play video games for eight hours. <laughs> um, but then I, I moved to Japan and I don't know what happened. Maybe it's just the, being in a different culture. I was finally a part of, a, I, I drew an agency. And so there was kind of some, a bit more accountability of, on things, which I never had before. Um, uh, and even when I had jobs prior to this that required accountability, those jobs, I still never felt like I, I would never do more than the bare minimum ever. Um, but then something happened when I moved to Japan and suddenly now I'm kind of like, I'm at this point in my life where, uh, pretty much like uh, when I'm doing like full work days, cause I try to, I try my best to leave one day a week where I don't do anything. I don't plan anything. And I just try to have some, some openness to it, uh, because of, I was basically scheduling, and I still could do this mostly on work days. I will schedule things like every single like hour. I will fill out like every hour of the day. Um, and, and this is like, I'm, I'm talking, this is like till wake up till sleep. Um, be it, if that's like, that includes like going to the gym or something as well. But uh, yeah, I, I will normally try to schedule uh, something every single hour of every day. What do you think uh, about that? I don't know. In in one sense, I'm I'm kind of, I. It's weird because I, often I hear about this burnout and a lot of people talk about burnout at all. But I don't feel that at all. I don't know if that's, maybe I'm lying to myself or something. But I. No, I don't think you are. I I really enjoy that my current way of living and the way I I handle yeah. it. Where, you know, even in in terms of when I said I was scheduling every hour, like, but that wouldn't include like, hey, if my friend wants to hang out, up until that point where I go and hang out with them. I will literally work nonstop until that point or work on stuff to be streaming or meetings or whatever it is. Um, and, I, and I don't know why that is, but I, I, I do like it, I think. Yeah. I, I think I like it. I, yeah. I, I feel pretty proud about it. Yeah, good. So so what's what's the consequence of laziness? I just hate that feeling so much when I sit there for one hour and I don't have anything planned or I don't, um, like I feel like I'm losing an hour. Uh, even though I know I'm not, and I know that, say, just going on a walk to the park. So uh, when, when you have a feeling of losing an hour, what do you do to make that feeling go away? Uh, I, it, normally, it's some form of procrastination in my mind that will kind of fill that hour, or I'll try and work on stuff. But it's it's if I have that hour, I'll probably play a game until that no, feeling's no, I, gone. I, I know. No, well, no, I, I don't think you, I think what you do is you schedule your full days so that you never have to feel yeah. that way. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you see what we're doing here is that, like, yep. I'm going to take actions, yeah. and the actions will create the feelings. And if I have a yeah. feeling, the feeling needs to be addressed through actions. Someone does something yeah. nice to me, gives me a dollar, I need to give them two. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, right? yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. oh my God, I'm wasting these precious hours. Mm. I feel like a waste. Okay, we're yeah. going to schedule from dawn till dusk. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is once again, I think we're seeing a pattern of, and this yeah. isn't necessarily bad. I think you've learned how to do this adaptively and you're resilient mm. and all this good stuff. So it's not like you're burning out or anything because yeah. you also sort of recognize that a little bit too much is going to be too much. So that's really good. Yeah, absolutely. So we're yeah. working on other stuff here. So let me ask you this. How did you feel about yourself when you were doing the bare minimum? I, d I don't think at that time I recognized it as such. Um, I think at the time I just recognized that I was doing the, the stuff I needed to do. Okay. And then it went from being a, a need to do things as opposed to how much can I do or, or, you know, how much stuff can I accomplish or can I kind of uh, achieve? Um, and I, I don't know what would cause that flip in me or what kind of gave me that gradual change. Um, but it, it did happen when I moved to Japan. I don't really know okay. why. I'm sure there's probably some emotional reason. So I, I'm hearing that you feel quite like fulfilled and accomplished and proud of yourself when you pack your days. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right? So you're you're like a productive human being. Good for you. Yeah, I like to feel like I'm productive, yeah. And so part of what I'm kind of curious about is sometimes people have almost an 
addiction to productivity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because and optimization, hundred percent. Because they have learned the price of not doing that, and so even yeah. then, the addiction becomes almost an avoidance of some yeah. past thing. Yeah. But I'm not hearing that you're trying to avoid anything. I wonder if there's something I'm trying to avoid. Like, was there ever like a moment in your life, kind of speaking of anime, right? Where like, as a yep. protagonist, you were like, never again, never again. I'm going to change and I'm going to attain my second level, my second tier of power level or whatever. And I'm <laughs> going to become Connor 2.0. Like, um, and, and it may not be a huge moment. It may be like a small moment where you, you know, because I, I don't think it started in Japan. I think it grew in Japan. You're right. But it sounds like you had yeah, some exactly. aversion to laziness before that. Like this was the chance for you to no longer be who you were. Yeah, I, I think I think that was uh, towards my because I, I lived in London for two years before I moved to Japan. And I think towards the end of that period, I really felt kind of um there was no big event or anything, but I just started feeling unhappy with a lot of my life circumstance at the time. Um, I was I was overweight at the time. When I, over, I mean, I, 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 I was overweight. And I was at like a, a physical shape that I, I wasn't happy with because I was always very active. Um, and I was always uh, just very, very sporty growing up. Um, and I felt like I'd kind of let that part of my life go. Um, going into being like age like 22 23 when obviously your metabolism starts to slow down and you start to realize all that all that pizza and the beer catches up to you um and i think i was also just unhappy with where i was creatively at the time as well and i think it was kind of an, an accumulation of things that kind of i was just unhappy with a lot of things and then i started really trying to get back into shape and then around the same time is when i got this offer to move to japan and then i think that's Around, all around this time is where I, I think that I just completely changed the type of content I was making. Um, I started changing how I was eating. I started changing my, how much I was exercising. And there was no there's no definitive... Uh, <laughs> that mug is so good. What? Oh. It's the number one dad mug. It's <laughs> comically large. It, my kids it. got it for me. No, that's the, that's the sweetest thing ever. I, I think there was just a general unhappiness with a bunch of different things, and I... I think as I started, I think the, definitely the catalyst was when I started working out more and, and, and losing weight mm -hmm. uh, and eating healthier is when I really started to, I think I just felt better in general. And then that led to a bunch of other changes that, that, that just kind of cascaded, I felt. Makes, makes a lot of sense, man. Sounds like you really reinvented yourself. You decided that you wanted your life to be a different thing and you moved towards it. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, looking back now, I, and I, I didn't appreciate this when I was in school or when I was in university. Uh, but I think I was, I, I, at the time I was just miserable. Like I, but I, I couldn't recognize that at the time. Um, and I don't know why that was, but this is probably where the gaming kind of came in, where it was me sinking 12 hours a day into gaming. What were you miserable um, about? What made I don't, I don't know, honestly, which is kind of what, when I was growing up after the fact, I kind of, it was the one big thing that I was really confused about is that I don't understand why I was sad or why I was kind of upset at my general life when I felt that everything was going a direction. Maybe the, not the direction I wanted, but it was the standard direction that I think most people would be happy with. But I also didn't know what direction I wanted either. So I, I think it's just so tough to figure this stuff out when you're a kid. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, I was doing, I got good grades. I was okay in school. I never caused much trouble. Um, and then I, you know, did the engineering and obviously everyone's like, oh, engineering, that's great. Yeah. You'll, you'll, your life will be fine. And you're just kind of like, okay, I guess I'll just keep doing it because everyone else tells me around me that's a good idea. But all I wanted to do was play games at the time. Yeah. So well, let me ask you one other thing, Connor. What about, uh, romance? Are you, can I ask you some questions about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I tend to keep a lot of that stuff private online, but we can, we can delve into like the surface level stuff if you want. We can also not talk about it. So l let me let me just share with you what I'm curious about, and then you let me know if it's Absolutely. good or not. Absolutely, yeah, yeah can, let's do that. That sounds great. J just, so the theme that we're running with is that you have, yeah, so maybe we should, I, I detect hesitation from you, and now I'm wondering about what's going on internally and whether you yeah. would feel okay saying no, or whether that would create guilt and therefore you can't say no. 
Well, I, okay, I feel at this point that I, if you ask a question that I'm uncomfortable with, I feel com comfortable okay, cool. saying I don't want to So, so uh, the, the only reason I bring it up is is just in, in, in relation to our general theme, which is, okay, sure, you, you sure. used to be sad, but you yeah. weren't sure why. Yeah. And now, even like what I'm getting a lot of, the most consistent theme is that everything's kind of going okay, but I'm not quite yeah. sure why. Right? Yeah. So th th there's like an internal, like, I, I feel kind of guilty about this, but it's okay because like it, when I force myself to do it, I end up forming relationships and forming relationships is good, just like studying yeah. engineering. So we're going to do it because it's good for Connor and it's the right thing to do. And we don't want to yeah. disappoint people and we want to be reliable and we want to be this thing. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Only reason I'm curious about romantic relationships at all, and we don't have to talk yeah. about it, is just whether this thing enters into the ro romantic realm or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely, it definitely, it definitely does um, for me. Um, I mean, it, I was in a, I guess I had a pretty, pretty bad relationship like four or five years ago that at the time I felt like I, I knew it was bad but i just wasn't able to for some reason and i think maybe this is the, the guilt aspect of me i just wasn't able to bring, bring myself to get out of it um and it, ultimately i'm very grateful that they ended up breaking up with me because i don't think i would have done it uh yeah. and i don't know why and it was a it was a really awful relationship for me uh i, I wouldn't i wouldn't say it's like i, I wouldn't say it was a, uh, like mentally abusive at all but uh there was definitely some things that were like pretty pretty fucked up uh, and I think that I had a really tough time knowing how to handle that because yes. you, just, you just don't get a you don't get so, a lesson on that growing up. <laughs> yep. So we're so I'm I'm gonna try to step in, okay, for yep. a second, and I'm gonna tell you about that relationship. We're not even gonna okay. ask you about it. So okay. and I could be completely wrong because I have no fucking idea, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so l let's just talk about generically people who are maybe a little bit like you who may wind up in relationships like this. Not really yeah. frankly abusive, because if it was frankly abusive, you would have left. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like you say, hey, yeah. this is objectively bad. Yeah. Therefore, I'm going to leave. But yeah. sometimes when we live our life. So let me think about how to say this. When we live our life in a way that actions are the way that we fix emotions, mm. we can end up ping ponging back and forth within a relationship. So yeah. if I break up with them, then that will evoke guilt and I didn't do my part or I did some of my part, mm. right? But like I could have done more. This is me giving up and I don't want to be someone who's a giver upper. And so then you're like, okay, I'm not going to break up. But then in the relationship, certain things happen that make you feel bad. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe you feel guilty for feeling bad because yeah. it's not their fault and you want to give them the benefit of the doubt and maybe yeah, you absolutely. give them the benefit yeah. of the doubt. So then you're like, okay, yeah. I want to stay in this relationship, but it hurts to stay in the relationship. And yeah. maybe even like college, you're a little bit, you know, like you're a little bit sad even though you shouldn't be. Yeah. And so this relationship on paper seems to be good in a lot of ways and you should be happy in this relationship. So you kind of stay in it. Yeah. Because you're not supposed to throw away things that should be good for you, right? Uh, yeah, no, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> well, you think so? Uh, how, does that? I'm trying to keep you from sharing. So, how, how does that sit with it? Are we completely off base here? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, at the time, a lot of my friends didn't didn't I didn't like it that much, <laughs> and I got a. It was kind of a. It was just a. I don't know. Like looking back, I'm like, man, I'm such an idiot. Like I, I just didn't do anything, and I think, and I don't understand why. But I remember having these feelings of. Um, I knew it wasn't good, but the thought of having to, uh, yeah, I suppose, deal with that guilt of, of having to, I guess also accept that I, it just wasn't working is also, you know, a tough thing to accept sometimes. Um, and something that I, I think uh, is, has always been tough. Yeah. And what makes it hard to accept that things aren't working? I don't know. It's, I guess it, in my head, it's, even though I under, like I know that my brain is doing some kind of weird ass gymnastics to try and justify that I, like I'm at fault or something like that, but I, I know it's not that. I'm, I'm, I'm conscious enough to be aware of that, but yet I can't bring myself to separate that feeling from it. Which feeling? Uh, the feeling of that like I'm at fault. Yes. Or that I've I'm I've I haven't done my part. Yeah. Right. And 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 that's so, so when you, when you feel irrationally that you haven't mm. done your part, what do you yeah. end up doing in the relationship? 
uh, normally I would just overcompensate and do too much. Which Absolutely. Was the problem. What you end up doing <laughs> is more. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because if you yeah. can do more, what does it do to the feeling in here? It feels like I, I can I can make that feeling go away. Absolutely. I can fix it. This relationship yeah. is not working. And I can fix her. That's the meme. <laughs> right? I was definitely guilty of that. I was definitely guilty of the I can I can fix her meme. Right? I don't know what the meme is, but I, I think I mean if there's you don't a know, meme, oh, okay. you know. it's it's <laughs> the meme is where dudes will often they'll get in a relationship they know is absolutely terrible and bad idea because they think that oh i can fix this person who is all going through a bunch of trouble or going through a bunch of mental problems and so the meme online is oh she's so attractive yada yada, yada i can fix her it's fine yeah i mean i i think this is the story of your life dude like you can fix it if, if it's not okay right if someone does something nice for you you can fix it by doing more for them yeah and i, I think there's that kind of that input where i feel that I think this this mindset I've had has had some success at points where I'm like, it must work for everything. And obviously, just, it's just not how life works. And so I'm, I kind of just expect, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No, I mean, I think I think it, that's how life works. That's how you yeah, get in the yeah. situation, right? Because look, when you fix all the problems, when you are yeah. twice as reliable and other people are half as reliable, when yeah. you pack all of your days, like it's working out for you, right? You're not overweight. Yeah. You're not in London. You're not in an empty career that you don't care about. Like things yeah. are working pretty well for you. And all you have to sacrifice yeah. is yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> right. All you have it's to do is be, be controlled by your emotions, which in, in the most common thing that you've said today, by the way, is like, I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. Which is weird because I feel that like I'm pretty self-aware in a lot of ways, but I guess it doesn't matter how self-aware you are if you're still being controlled by your emotions. Um. You're still letting them control me. Yeah. So how does it feel to be so self-aware and still be controlled by your emotions? It sucks. Sometimes it sucks because I, I know that there's a, a, a thing that I should be doing or a better way to handle a situation. And I just don't for whatever reason. Yeah. So, so that's a problem, but I don't think it's the problem that you think it is. I think yeah. that what you want to do in that situation is figure out what you should be doing different. Yes. Right? So that you can do something different. So yeah, that you can yeah, stop yeah. feeling that way. Y yes. I'm guilty. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> You're right. Man, my, I, I moved in my fucking thing. Can you count to 10 for me? Sorry, I was... One, two, three, four, okay, five, perfect. six, seven, okay. eight, nine, so, ten. So, Connor, this is what we're going to do. We're going to teach you a different way. That'd be great. Okay. So what we're going to teach you how to do is, first of all, articulate emotions. And secondly... Yes how to just sit with them and process them without acting. Okay. This is what, because now this is the cool thing. Like if you feel guilty, that's not something you have to fix. Right. So the only time, so guilt, let's learn, just learn something. Okay. So guilt is information. Emotions are information. Sometimes they're motivational. Yeah. Sometimes they're drives. But what we really want, what, what I want you to focus on is that emotions should be information about the situation. So when you feel guilty, that's some part of you telling you, hey, we could be making a mistake. Yeah. But when your rational mind says, you know what? This relationship is fucked. We should really leave. And yeah. then what you need to be able to do is integrate that emotion that you have with your logical thinking and then come up with like one thing that you want to do. Right now, what I think is going on is that you're like binary. Like sometimes the logic is working. Yep. And then when the emotion takes over, it's like, well... I just, we're not going to listen to the logic today. And then you yeah, ping pong, yeah. right? So what we want is integration. And the cool thing is that if you can learn how to process emotions, because mm. remember the goal of an emotion is that it needs to be addressed. So even something okay. like gratitude, like you're going to fix gratitude, right? I'm going to stop yeah. feeling gratitude by no longer feeling indebted. So I'm going <laughs> to do something for you. And then I'm going to feel proud of myself. And now I no yeah. longer feel debt. So this is the core yeah. problem is what you need to do is just process the emotion without action. And if okay. you can process the emotion, what will happen is you will be more in control of your life. Okay. Questions? Oh, how do I not do action? <laughs> right. So, so like, I'm, yeah, that's going to be hard for you because yeah, that's yeah, all you know how to do. 
right? So that's why we got to teach you something else. Okay, so okay. I, I think the first thing to do is is just to try your best to identify the emotion and okay. why you're feeling that way. Okay, okay. okay. So like, I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling guilty because X, Y, Z. So that's going to be step number one. So okay. we've even done a good job here, and I'm going to give you a couple of like tips. So gratitude and indebtedness are going to come hand in hand. Mm. And what I want you to try is to lean into the gratitude instead of the indebtedness. So okay. if you express or articulate appreciation, so there's this weird circuit in our brain. Freud actually made this discovery that we can use language as a substitute to, for action. So it's really oh. bizarre, but sometimes even talking about something essentially scratches the same itch as doing something, which is why there are two kinds of yeah. people in life. There are talkers and doers. And <laughs> some people go on talking about everything I'm going to do, talking about everything I'm going to do. And yeah. then they tank their own internal motivational drive because somewhere in the brain, for some weird reason, talking about something kind of does the same thing is it has the same function as doing it yeah I, i've i've recognized that in the past how uh, so? for some reason i i it, it's like i guess one thing that i've come to appreciate growing older is that it's like when a friend comes to you and they have a problem uh and i used to be that person who would sit down and someone tells me a problem i'm like okay well here's what we're gonna do to fix it whereas now as i've, I've gotten older I've, I've learned to appreciate oh no they don't they don't want me to a lot of the time they don't want me to fix it. They just want me to listen and, and validate how they feel. And that can be as fulfilling as sometimes fixing the problem for people, you know. Right. And so I, and I, this is the yeah. cool thing. Beautiful example, right? Because when they yeah. feel better about it, I know it's kind of weird. Even though the, technically the problem still exists, it's, yeah. it no longer feels like a problem. It's just something Absolutely, that needs yeah. to be taken care of. Yeah. And once they sort of talk through it, then you can sort of execute on it without mm. any of the emotional turmoil. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. We're going to help you do that. So nice. <laughs> if you feel grateful to someone, and I'm sure you say mm. grateful things, right? You say thank yeah. you, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. I always try to say thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so I want you to try to just express appreciation as a substitute for fixing the indebtedness. So, okay. so recognize within yourself that like, okay, like I'm starting to feel indebted. Now that we know what we're looking for, you may be able to find it more easily. When okay. you feel grateful, when you feel like you need to do nice, something nice for someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can still do nice things. I'm not saying don't do nice things, but don't, don't do them unconsciously. Don't be like driven, like, okay. oh my God, like I got to do something <laughs> nice for them. Like, otherwise, like I, I, I can't keep feeling this way. You know what I mean? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. You feel that yeah, way? That, that, that doesn't make yeah. Sense. yeah. So like that, that's weird. Right. So, so we got to recognize that and just express your appreciation verbally. Notice that mm. feeling and then try to speak to them. That's number one. Okay. Second thing is in terms of this whole like being, uh, you know, turning people down. Yeah. So like that too, like what do you think you feel when you turn people down for social things? Um, I, I think there's kind of this, there is some, some a slight bit of regret there. But uh, it's mainly, I guess, guilt. Guilt is the main thing. And what do you feel guilty about? Uh, not meeting expectations, I think, a lot of the time. Okay. Or not being available. Okay. And why do you want to meet expectations? Um, that is a fantastic question. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know where this is stemmed from in my uh my entire life but i've always wanted to uh, meet expectations um or surpass them or whatever that is um I, I yeah i just i just always want to be reliable in that sense and i, d I don't know why okay so let's talk about that for a second okay. when you meet expectations or you exceed expectations yeah how do you feel oh sometimes i feel good Sometimes I feel like, okay, I did the thing that I was going to do. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, feel, I feel good about it most of the time. Now, here's a weird question. Do you, when did you start feeling good about yourself in the absence of actions? 
as in just purely on a like an emotional feeling. yeah like you're okay with who you are now right you don't need to be something yeah. else but when did that happen uh, i think that happened um maybe my second year in japan or maybe a, 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 like towards the end of my first year in japan okay so now About i'm gonna ask you kind of a weird question maybe impossible <laughs> to answer okay how old is the person that wants to meet people's expectations? Wow, that's a that's a very good question. I think it's like the the twenty one year old me. Tell me about the twenty one year old you. Um. Well, I was. I had like. I think that I had like no, no limit on like my social battery, if you will. Uh, and I was just super fascinated with meeting everyone and anyone I could talk to. Uh, and I I always, and it's, I guess it sounds sad now that I'm like less social in a way, but, or more reserved. But yeah, I was just, I think I, I was, I kind of want to, in my head, I, I'm like, Matt, why am I not as social as I used to be? Because I, I think I used to, I could, you know, I used to love um, going to anime conventions in like, I would go to like Indiana. I don't even, I got, British, a Welsh kid going to Indiana, what is the point of that? It serves no purpose. But I just loved meeting people at the time and talking to people from different backgrounds um, and just getting to kind of open my perspective uh, of the world. Uh, and then I guess as I've gotten older, I've just felt less inclined to do that for whatever reason. But I'd feel happier, so I don't know what that means. You feel happier with what? In which situation? I feel happier with my current, like where my life is at or where my emotional state is at, generally. Yeah. And but was twenty one year old you happy? I think I was happy. I think there was a, a few things I was kind of uh, not happy with, but I think I was okay. Yeah, I think okay is a good word. <laughs> when did you become okay? So let me think about this. Yeah. So what? what... Uh, yeah. I... Yeah, go ahead. I, 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 I can sometimes I, I can tell that I'm I'm answering these things, but I I feel like I'm answering when you answer. Ask, I'm sure this is a common problem that you you run into uh, when I'm answer, when people are answering the questions you ask them. I'm answering the questions, but sometimes I'm 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 like throwing an answer out there because I feel like I need to answer. But maybe that that question just now, I don't feel like I have a, a confident answer for. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so and and. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a second. Okay. <laughs> so how does it feel to not have the right answer to the question? Oh, I hate it. I... Awful. I hate it. <laughs> it's just a horrible feeling. And and so what do you do when you start to feel that way? How do you fix it? I'm, I'm just looking in the barrel for something. I'm trying to scrape around. Right? Find, let's just get something competent. And, and so what are you, what are you, you're trying to live up to expectations? I, get, I didn't think about it like that. Now you say that. that <laughs> yeah, you're right. Right? Oh, damn it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's so reflexive, man. That's make, weird. Why do I do that? Make, <laughs> right? So, but like, is it, I guess in my head, I've never once considered that it's like, it's okay for me not to give an answer. Like, I feel like that's incompetence on my part in some capacity. So how, I know, we're going to try again. It's okay for you to, you're not screwing okay. up. So this is the cool okay. thing. You're doing great, right? Just had a, we had a little bit, tiny little bit of breakthrough. Cliffhanger. Yeah. We got it. We got to okay. pause like two minutes okay. ago sure, sure. and then we can pick up next week because we just okay. did. Okay. But when, when I ask you a question that's hard for you to answer, how old do you feel? This kid who's rifling through looking for yeah. the answer. It's a kid. It's not a grown up. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Right. So how old do you feel in that moment? Do you feel hey, like which moment, sorry. when I'm asking you a question and you're like looking, I love that imagery of like looking through the file cabinet <laughs> desperately for some kind of answer. It, it, it does feel like I'm in a situation sometimes where I feel that I, it, it's like this feeling of you've almost faked that you're there. Like you're, you somehow everyone has agreed that you are on you're, you're the same level of whatever that is, whether it be an emotional maturity or even like professional sense. And you're just like, man, I feel like I'm faking it. Like, <laughs> and I don't know why. Like, I feel like there's just some kind of, um, there's just something missing. But then I, I'm also aware enough to realize that I think that everyone else around me probably has the same emotion at some point. Like, I'm aware that that is a normal thing to feel. Um, 
and that I shouldn't just, that's not just a me thing that I feel that way. And so when I feel that way, often a lot of the times I'm aware that it's just that moment and this is not reflective of how I actually like generally think uh, and, and my attitude in general. But it's just like a moment where you get, where you're like, ah, I just, yeah. I guess like, imposter syndrome is the, is the word for it, but it's it's so minimal and I, I feel like I'm able to identify it immediately and stop it, or not stop it, but not allow it to kind of do any kind of bearing. But I never considered imposter, imposter syndrome in like an emotional way, which I'm now realizing totally makes sense that you could feel an imposter syndrome in an emotional way. What do you mean by uh, imposter syndrome in an emotional way? Like I should be able to express myself in this given situation, but for some reason I can't. And so I, in my in my like head, I'm like, okay, I'll just, I'll go to the answer that I feel like is closest, but I know it's not like 100% representative yeah. of the truth. So, so Connor, you're honestly, dude, you're doing awesome. And how, is it okay. okay that I tell you that? Does that, because yeah, I'm yeah, reassuring I you. Very kind. Yeah, I appreciate that. Kind? K kind? How's that kind? Uh, to reassure me? Yeah. I, okay. No, never mind. You don't have to reassure me. So. No, no, okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. I, I see how it's kind. Sorry. It's just I've never. Okay. Heard, 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 <laughs> so I was like, what? What did I do? <laughs> no, no. Uh, anyway. So. Okay. You, yeah. So that's another. That's another one, right? So if I say, like, okay. if I do something nice for you, you can't yeah. sit with it. You're like, oh, Absolutely you're, like, not. No, you're, you're so not. kind, yeah. Doctor K. Like, like that's why. Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> Because you won't, you won't let me reassure you. You just, you just hit the ball right, right back. You see what I mean? Is that not accepting the being reassuring, saying that? Is that, is that? No, but no, no. I mean, there, there's some like I, I think, I think you, you kind of like if I try to make you feel good, what do you have to do? You got to make me feel good. You got to call me kind. Yeah, I guess I do. I right? guess I do. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so now yeah. we're gonna practice. You ready? You're about to get fucked, my friend. Okay. <laughs> Can't say anything nice about me, okay? All right. Okay. Connor, you are doing awesome, man. You are like, you are swimming mm -hmm. in some hard stuff, and you're like mm -hmm. learning about your emotions, and it's really great. Like, seriously, I know it's kind of feeling overwhelming right now, but yeah. in a couple of days, and if you work on that, like, we've just dumped you into the ocean, which is why it's overwhelming. Yeah. But you're honestly doing awesome. And I don't even I think you that. realize how much you're growing over the course of this conversation. Oh, thank you. This is where I instinctively want to say, that's very kind of you to say. So what does it <laughs> feel I like to say, would... not say that? Uh, that's weird. <laughs> what is that? I, I don't know. I just, I've, I guess I've always been, always been, had this mindset that if somebody is, says something nice to you or does something nice to you, I just I should immediately just find a way to re reciprocate that. Yeah, right. So, so like, thank you is fine, but like, yeah. The more overt I am, maybe you're like, oh, yeah, but Dr. K, like, I'm able to do this because you're so brilliant and all that kind of shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, like, and, and that's okay. I'm not saying that you should, when people are nice to you, like, that's good programming. But for yeah. the purpose of this conversation and where you yeah. are, like... It's so just, no purpose to be that. Because yeah. it's so uncomfortable to sit with that emotional energy. I can see you're like... Argh. Yeah, no, yeah, that's fair. I, I, I'm very tough. It's very tough for me to... to, to um kind of when someone compliments me and I, i'm like in a room with them looking at them I'm, it's very tough for me to just sit there and kind of sit with it yeah right so so like sitting with it like that's what we got to practice so identifying mm. the emotion and just sitting with it because we don't yeah. want in it, like that ping pong in your bad relationship it's like those emotions are controlling you they're jerking yeah. you one way and they're jerking yeah. you the other way very common with men by the way so this is like yeah. how we deal with our emotions. We are taught from a very young age. And I see this actually more often in women now too. So I think this gap mm. is shrinking. But we're taught that like when we feel a certain way, we have to fix something on the outside. And so we try to yeah. create an environment that feeds us a particular kind of emotion. Yeah. The problem... Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, there's this also a weird dichotomy where I, I, you know, I think as a human being, you're just guilty of... Uh, you know, sometimes you want praise for people from people, or you want uh, compliments. But then the moment I get it, I'm like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> but it's like this weird cycle. I don't know why. Yeah, right. So because because how do you feel about wanting praise from other people? I hate that. I hate that I feel that way. I hate it. Right. So like this is yeah, the problem. I... Is is this kind of goes back to when you're reliable 
Hey, I'm Connor. I'm going to be the driver. It's going to be win for you and win for me. Everybody wins. <laughs> We get to go out. Yeah. I force myself to socialize. Yeah. I'm going to make a new friend. That's good for yeah. Connor. And it's good for yeah. you because you want to hang out with me and I don't want to be an asshole. I don't want to feel like an asshole. So I'm going to say, okay, let's <laughs> hang out. The only person who loses is you. Yeah. Not the part of Connor that is like optimizing my life because woohoo, we leveled up plus one friend. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But like the part of you that's like, you know, I just don't want to do this right now. Yeah. And it, it's those emotions and stuff like that, like all that stuff, like you desire, you want praise. Why do you think you want praise so much? Because there's some part of you that is like yeah, unhappy with yourself, that doesn't think you're good enough. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Right? Like it's like this kid who's in going to Welsh school and the kid <laughs> feels stupid and he just wants yeah. the world to cut him a break so that he can do the best that he's supposed to do. It's not supposed to be this hard. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, it's one of those things where you, where you feel that emotion like, damn, why do I feel this way? Like, I, I don't get anything from it. And I hate that I have that thought. Um, yeah. You, you hate that you have the thought that, which part do you hate? I'm confused. I, I hate that I f sometimes, I feel like I, I would l like appreciate the praise or I feel like I, I want the praise. And that even though I, I don't think that I don't think that I act on that a lot of the time. Um, I think I'm pretty good at identify when I'm when I'm doing that and when it serves no purpose. But I still just don't like that I feel that way. Yeah, right. So you judge yourself very harshly yeah. for you call yeah, it absolutely. being vain. Yeah. Right? yeah, being vain. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's how you judge it. But I call it being human. Yeah, yeah. Because hey, I don't know if you know this, but human we all beings. Want praise want praise <laughs> yeah and uh, you're human bro yeah and it's, and it, it's kind of frustrating because i recognize that other people around me like i'm i you know and i whenever i work with people or i, I do anything with with friends or they, anything i'm i'm always so i've recognized that praise is so like important as a, a part of like when it's justified to give and so i recognize that it's important to give it but for some reason then when i want it i for some reason can't accept the fact that i want praise um i don't know why yeah yeah right so yeah let's dig into that for a second <sighs> okay okay so you want praise and what how do you think about yourself for wanting praise i think it's like weak yes <laughs> right good beautiful Connor is weak. And if you think yeah. of yourself as weak, yeah. what does a weak kid need to hear to start feeling better about themselves? Uh, I guess praise. <laughs> From other people. Yeah, yeah. It's a cycle. Yeah, it is. It is. Right? So your self-judgments, which have served you so well, are the yeah. very thing that is actually creating the problem that they are pissed off about. Hmm. It's yeah. like that meme of like, you know, the b bicycle person where they stick the stick themselves in the spokes. <laughs> yeah. And then and that's, that's, that's what yeah, you're doing, yeah, man. Me. Yeah, that's me. Right. So um, it's like, like th yeah. this is the core thing. This, this, like, I can't be indebted. I can't be, you got to be so perfect. And yeah. I'm not saying, I think there's a lot of healthy part to it. And this is the weird thing is that this is like 80% of you is fine. And then there's 20% hmm. or 10% or maybe even 5%. Yeah. That like this coexists. And the reason it's so confusing is because they're not integrated. It's kind of like you kind of get how your consciousness shifts between the two. Yeah. There are some moments where this other part of you is winning and then like you get pissed at yourself for that part winning. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, man, I'm so weak. Like, why do I have to be like that? Why can't I be like this? Why can't I be productive all the time? Why can't I be yeah. confident all the time and grateful all the time? Because you're human, man. And you got to yeah. accept yourself. Yeah. And then now you're like, man, fuck, I can't accept myself. What's wrong with me? No, I, I, I know I have to. It's just about going through the steps of, of working on that and um, kind of being more open to that and understanding why I feel that way more instead of just shrugging it off. Yeah, so I, I think just understand that you feel that way, right? So just notice it and then also catch the judgmental thoughts. Mm. The part of you, like, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do more, but yeah. there's a big difference between you reflexively doing more and you subconsciously doing more and you mm. automatically doing more 
and you sort of acknowledging your emotions and letting them have a space, recognizing that you're human, recognizing that you're flawed, recognizing that you can only work on so much stuff at the same time. Hmm. And then sort of saying like, you know, I don't need to be perfect today. Yeah. How does that sound? Um, that sounds kind of nice. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it sounds kind of nice not to have to hold it, all the expectations constantly. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, I guess because I've just had that that feeling of, okay, if I don't be I, the best I could be every day, um, then I'm, you know, I, I guess I'm somehow failing in my, in my own sense, but I guess I need to work on that as well. Right. And, and so that's the tricky thing is if, you, if you're not the best every day, then you're failing yeah. yourself and then you need yeah. to be better, which means you need yeah. to be the best every day. Yeah, and and the the thing I, I know it's kind of weird, but like Connor, you're you're, you're doing good, dude. You have a lot. Yeah, to be proud I, of. I, I I'm able to recognize yeah, that yeah. objectively that I'm doing good. Yeah. Um, I just like I said earlier, I think I guess there's always just this this nagging feeling in my brain of like, we we can do better. We can do better. <laughs> so so I know it's kind of paradoxical, but I would let yeah. that no longer be a nagging feeling, and okay. let it actually come full front and center. Okay. And just like, let it fill up your mind that, wow, like in this moment, even though I've done a really good job, yeah, there's a part of me that really wants me to do more. And that's literally, bro, all you have to do. You don't even have to fix just recognize it. recognize it. Just recognize it. Okay. Like that's that. where you are right now. <laughs> okay. And just be like, there's a part of me that's unsatisfied with this. Yeah. I, I yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, yeah, it's very helpful actually to hear that. <laughs> and and I, I think what I detected in you, hopefully, I mean, I don't know, is some amount of relief when you were like, that sounds good to not. Yeah, no, that, that, that is kind of a relief to hear because I guess, like I said, I've never spoken to anyone about this stuff. Uh, obviously, you have friends and stuff, but, you know, uh, having kind of um, a bit more of kind of reassurance on it is definitely helpful. Cool. Questions? Um, question. So your main advice is just don't shrug it off. Just kind of sit with it, recognize it and kind of try and understand it more. Uh, yeah. So and, I, and I'd start it. by articulating what you're feeling okay. and noticing what you're feeling. Okay. And then like, if you want other things, like don't push it away automatically and yeah. don't give into it automatically. Basically don't behave okay. automatically in relation to your emotions. And that starts with like awareness of it. Yeah, and you'll be—it's it's always weird because I never associated, which is such a stupid thing to think. But in my mind, I was like, my actions are independent of my emotions. Like I am doing what I believe is right, and not because I feel a certain way, but because I've decided that way. But I guess that's stupid to think that my emotions don't play into that. Yes, it. I mean, it's stupid. <laughs> it is. I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> so, but I still, so, for some reason, I'm like, I am a machine. I will just do yes, what I think that, is right. That is what men do usually, yeah. and they're wrong. So, if someone, <laughs> if a human being thinks that their actions are independent of their emotions, that yeah. actually means that their emotions are the puppet master that is shaping their yeah. uh, uh, in intellect. Yeah. Your emotional, yeah. uh, your emotions are actually rigging the intellectual thing. Yeah. And that's what people don't realize. Like literally, if you look at your brain, you, you constantly have emotions. They're always active and being mm -hmm. integrated. The, the only difference is when we're when we don't think we're being controlled by our emotions is when we're actually being controlled the most. Yeah, because yeah. one of the features of emotion is that it gets rid of awareness. I'm not angry. You're angry. <laughs> I'm behaving yeah. completely logically. Mer. Yeah. Yeah. So your emotions are always influencing your behavior, and that's how they're designed. Yeah. So it, and you, you know, when you say stupid, I mean like it, it, that. It's not really stupid. It's it's not stupid. It's uneducated, which is a big difference. <laughs> I love that too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right? It's like because we don't get yeah. taught this. You fucking I don't know what the Welsh word for this stuff is, but you I mean you grew up learning Welsh and learning everything in Welsh. Yeah. And yeah, we don't no, get... we, I mean, like, uh, you know, I, everyone, everyone knows that, like, there's been, like, no help at all with or any education on mental health or how to you yeah. know, process emotions and whatnot. And, uh, and even more so in the UK as well. It's pretty bad. And, and there's a really cool study that was done in, in New York City uh, that where they taught kids social and emotional skills. And mm. everyone, like, moved up one letter grade if they were in that. Like, wow. Like, so it's a whole it's worth 11 points. 
on a hundred point wow. scale is what it's worth when you just like understand yourself and we, they also teach social skills which is connected in some ways but yeah yeah i feel like social skills are important um do you want to share a little bit about what you're kind of taking away from the conversation where you are now? Yeah, no, I guess you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to try and verbalize it and you can tell me if, you know, I'm, I'm taking away the right things or okay. the things I should be taking away. Um, basically, uh, one, I have a self-fulfilling guilt cycle that I need to be more aware of and be uh, and take more action. Oh, not more action. <laughs> the problem is I've taken too much action. I need to <laughs> sit with it and d d realize why I'm feeling that way and take a more appropriate uh, kind of time to analyze it or to just n not take action sometimes, which is I should do more. Um, I, I also need to understand my emotions better and when they're affecting me and, and recognize that and maybe sit with that as well. Uh, and also don't beat myself up when I'm not doing what I think is perfect the thing that i should be doing in whatever capacity yeah beautiful um, so i would say a couple of, of small caveats there number yeah, one please. i don't think you have to realize why you're feeling a particular way just notice yeah. that you're feeling it you know that the realization will come later okay um second thing is be careful about not beating yourself up for beating yourself up okay yeah don't don't fall in the cycle so, of then never right, beating yourself up <laughs> right so, so what i want you to do is just acknowledge i'll give you language sometimes this is helpful like wow i'm being okay. really harsh on myself today yeah that's all you have to do is just notice it not even that okay. you have to change it and if you're like you can even ask yourself like okay do i want to continue being this way with myself and there are going to yeah. be days where you're going to be like yeah like this is actually what i need to do today yeah so just add this awareness component it's beautiful like, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like, I, I think you've understood a ton. And and my hope is that, like, I think you're going to be, I know you're doing really great, but like, it's like, you're doing a hundred, you're scoring a hundred percent in like eight or nine out of your 10 classes. And okay. this is just yeah, the one thing yeah. that I, I think is missing a little bit, which you're doing fine. So there's, you know, yeah. it's just all part of the growth or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, that's great to hear. I, I appreciate that. I, I'm glad that I was able to talk about it more. Yeah. Any last thoughts or questions or anything else you want to talk about before we kind of wrap up for the day? Um, uh, I guess one, one thing I've, I've noticed that I shifted in myself. And I'd love to hear your opinion on or what you, you could kind of help me understand why this is. Uh, and I, I, I won't take up too much of your time. Um, so when I was like, uh, when I was like younger, I was always way more angry. Um, and I don't know what happened, but I just kind of stopped being angry. I don't know if that's just maturing or, um, but it's like a, to a noticeable amount now where I, I absolutely avoid, well, not avoid, but like, uh, I, I will just, I, I will never ever like shout or raise my voice at someone um, or get into like, even like when there's like situations where like everyone's getting heated and it could be like a fight or something, I'll just not get worked up. And I don't know why, because when I was younger, I always used to do that. And I wonder if you have any, any explanation of, of where that could come from. What do you do with your emotions, Connor? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so how would you feel about yourself if you got angry? Uh... I'd feel ashamed if I got angry, like genuinely angry at something. I, I always get like online, I always get, you know, you always get worked up and stuff. And I love complaining and getting fake angry in private, but it's not like a genuine emotion of anger. Are you, are, would you let yourself get angry? I think I would, but I'd never want to show it. I feel like it's, an, uh, and in my mind, I associate with it being like an ugly emotion. Yeah, so I think, I mean, what we're, so the w way that we become normatively male alexithymic mm. is by suppressing our emotions. <laughs> yeah. And and so I, I think that the anger, there's anger. I yeah. think it just, you just do this weird thing where you take the things that you're angry at with other people, like your ex-girlfriend, and then you wind yeah. up blaming yourself through yeah. self-judgment. So if you want to know where it went, you stopped pointing it out there because it's ugly to show. It started floating yeah. around in here and then it found a pretty good target. And <laughs> hey, 
it turns out that like if you're angry at yourself and you're judgmental towards yourself, it really helps you a lot in life because then you always yeah. want to be better. Why yeah. are you this way? Yeah. Oh my God, why can't I sit with my emotions? How could I be so stupid? Yeah. That's anger, yeah, that's bro. Very guilty of that. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'll only ever get angry at myself. There you go. Well, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd it go? Yeah. You just started pointing it inward because you would not allow yourself to point it outward. This you're yeah. not ready for, but at one point, at some point, you got to start getting angry at things outside of you as part of your growth. Yeah. Because this is where, I mean, the reason, you know, the, going back to this relationship that you can't leave, it's because like you kept on getting angry with yourself instead of getting angry with them. Yeah, that's true. Because you wouldn't let yourself. <laughs> It seems like such a simple thing to connect the dots, but I wonder how I was just unable to connect those dots for so long. Because you weren't taught how. Yeah, <laughs> true. true. Right? I mean, that that's what it, it's. It, you wonder how, like, even that, like, look at that. Like, what, yeah. you feel that emotion behind, uh, how could I, it's so simple now, like, I could. Yeah. Self-judgment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Because I feel like if I, I could be able to, if I'm talking to someone, I'd be able to recognize it pretty quickly in them, but I would never be able to recognize it in myself. Yeah. Which I right? guess is a, a normal part of being human, I guess, in some Normative aspects. male alexithymia, because you, you, you turned off all the dials on internal emotional yeah. awareness, and you started fixing things through acting. And so that's the other yes. thing. And it's not, it's not, it's really not your fault. This is normal. So once I start fixing, once I start creating an environment, I mean, hell, you have a Google calendar or whatever that's scheduled. You have external <laughs> yeah. tools that keep you from feeling things. Yeah. And you figured out, holy shit, this is super cool. If I work six days a week, I try really hard to take one day off. I do. I do. If if you do all of these things, you can cultivate the right emotions within you. Mm. And then as you start to cultivate particular emotions in your garden, you can like prune all the anger. So where did it go? You pruned it away. Mm. I would bet money that subconsciously, you know, the things that are going to upset you and you avoid them like the plague. Yes. Shocking. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. So at some point, you're going to have to start engaging with those things because now you're in a really tricky spot because if you can't afford to let yourself feel angry, that means that there's a slice of life that you can't engage in. I never thought about it that way, but that's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I never, yeah, that's a really interesting way of putting it. Cool. Damn. What a great question. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah, I was I was always curious about that, and I never connected the dots for some reason. And I guess I've always assumed these aspects of my emotional self and my life are all separate. Uh, but it, I, I also knew deep down that they were all connected, and I just didn't have the intelligence uh, to to realize how they were connected. Yeah, I, and I, I wouldn't use the word intelligence, but y yeah. yeah, right? I, I think it's just like, literally, dude, this is like, this is, I mean, I, I went through this process, like uh, most people go through this process, mm. um, and that gender gap is shrinking, but I would say 40 years ago, it was much more common in men, but like men are, we still do this, where we solve our emotions on the outside. We shape our environment <laughs> to evoke particular feelings. Absolutely, Yeah. And so sometimes that means really good things, but it also opens us up to manipulation. And this, yeah. I don't want to go quite as far as saying, but sometimes when men are in, when you kind of mentioned that you were not the best relationship, sometimes yeah. the reason they're not the best is because people learn that like, okay, if I can make this man feel this way, or even a woman, women can mm. be vulnerable to this too. Anyone who solves, I see this a lot in women that are like put in very high pressure situations with tiger parents. Right. Where if I can make you feel a certain way, I can control your behavior because the way that you manage your emotions is through behavior. You can't process mm. it internally. So all I have to do is evoke no. an emotion and then you'll dance like a puppet. And it is infuriating to be in those kinds of situations and not be able to control your emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I guess I, I thought I understood. I thought I knew how to control them. But I mean, looking back, I can obviously tell that I was, yeah, I was being controlled by my emotions in a yep. lot of situations. Cool. Damn, it's very eye-opening. <laughs> cool, well, that's what we do here. Thank you for Yeah, that must be cool to do this all the time. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it, it must be such it, a cool cool experience. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's awesome. I really appreciate it. It, used, it must be, I mean, we did it today. 
yeah, yeah. no this this feels great yeah this feels awesome yeah cool i guess i'd always had just this adverse feeling to uh talking about it in any kind of capacity uh so it's really nice to be able to do that yeah look at you being aware of your adverse feelings on the inside <laughs> And how they uh, yeah, 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 I, 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 I know sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I'll, I'll no, not do that. It, it's it's normal. So so there's also a lot of studies that show that men are actually reluctant to engage in things like couples therapy because we feel yeah. outgunned. Because <laughs> in, in heteronormative relationships, our female partners yeah. know how to articulate their emotions. But we just say like, yeah. you know, like we go into a couples therapist and then the, the we, we did a YouTube video on this that. <laughs> a bazillion people have watched in like 24 hours but yeah that actually men feel outgunned because you go into a couple's therapist and the couple's therapist is like how does that make you feel and then your like f female partner is like it makes me feel you know like he wants me to be perfect and i feel inadequate yeah. and you say she says all this shit and then your therapist is like <laughs> yeah like, wow that must really hurt and then and then she asks you well how does that make you feel and you're like bad y yeah yeah i'm very limited in my vocabulary of yeah being able to express myself. And, and, and so we're, we, we, we feel disadvantaged when discussing yeah, our no, emotions. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I've got to get that advantage. <laughs> I'm kidding. Absolutely, man. So one question yeah. I have for you, one last question. Sure. Is do you have any anime recommendations? <laughs> well, you had Gaunt on, and Gaunt's kind of the king of it. Okay. Um, my anime recommendations are not as much good, I'm sure. I always say Death Note is a great starter. You should watch Death Note. I love Note. Death Note. You like Death Note? I love okay, Death Note. Perfect. So he recommended Monster, which I, I started you, to get into. <laughs> but it seems... It oh, seems... Dude, God is so good at recommending. I would never have said Monster, but that, that's such a good recommendation for you. Um, it's about this this psychological monster who... Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm like 10 episodes yeah. in, but I kind of got bored. Does it get like better? Yeah, that's the problem with the anime is that it kind of it kind of teeters out for about... It really struggles in the in the the ten to twenty five episode kind of okay. segment, but after that, it, it it's really really good. Worth powering um, through. I think it's worth powering through. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Um, then I, I will do that. Other anime, um, obviously, Attack on Titans, an easy one to recommend if you haven't watched that. I need to finish it. Called. I think I did like yep. the first part of season four. Uh, that's how far. Oh, I well, am. I think there's like the the final part is coming out like next no, in November. I think. Okay. Okay. Um. Psychopaths as well is is a good one. If you haven't okay. seen that one, have, yeah, you, have a, you heard about this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I I'm aware that it is an anime and it's supposed to be pretty good, but I'll I'll check it out. Yeah, it's about um this kind of futuristic society where if somebody's I guess mental health is too bad, they get executed um by the cops. But that's if they go off the off the limit, uh, and then there's and this works on every you know this this computer can decide everyone's mental score um and then there is one person who the computer just doesn't work on uh cool. and how that how that how that factors in sounds cool man and um, um you would like that i think it's uh, it's pretty good yeah um Cool. Thanks for the recommendation. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. And do you want to just tell us, I, I know that your podcast and stuff is huge, but we didn't give yeah. you a chance. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about where we can find you? Yeah. I mean, obviously the Trash Taste podcast, uh, I'm C-Dog VA on like every social, uh, stream a lot on Twitch too. So come by. Uh, yeah, it's normally good times, uh, laughs and, uh, no anger. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Only fake anger. Only fake anger. Exaggeration. Like a good streamer. The, by the way, there's one thing that I've noticed that people who who do a lot of emotional suppression really love watching anime, because th there's that... there's a um, compensatory hyper emotional component to most anime. Oh, huh. well, it's it's funny. Yeah, because I, I was really really obsessed with anime growing up, and it's only really the past four years or so when moving to Japan kind of stopped watching a lot of anime I, I i seldom watch anime anymore it's it's a once a month kind of thing for me so when you do manga or what i honestly i watch a lot of youtube and a lot of uh crappy netflix documentaries if they release a documentary or anything i'll probably watch it hmm, interesting cool uh, i'm a sucker for the format even though i know it's completely oversaturated and out overdone but it's you know, it's like watching real stuff any any recommendations for documentaries then uh, I watched one recently that was really good. Uh, I need to get the name right. I'll open up Netflix right now. It's about the 
people going for the record for taking the longest dive. Hmm. Um, so it's the, a, about free diving? Yes, it's horrific. You should uh, The deepest breath, you should watch it. It's really good. Okay, cool. It's two hours long, uh, and it's terrifying. You, I just people, you just think that like, I, that's I'd love to see them on the show. You're like, how does your brain get to the point where you're like, I'm gonna dive a hundred meters holding my breath? Uh, what do we escape in there? I'll I'll I'll, t I'll tag team you. Good good cop, bad cop. I'll <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's. Let, that that's interesting. Are they? But okay, that's interesting. That does all kinds of weird things to pressure at hundred meters, but. Yeah, um, you sink after like 30. I didn't know this. Yeah. After 30 meters, you just start sinking. Um, yep. And then your lungs like crumple up. Yep. Uh, but they somehow still swim back up. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's wild. Cool. Thanks for the uh, recommendations. And so you, they can love it. If you, yeah. Uh, cool. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. There's a lot of interesting physiology involved. Um, but thank you so much for coming on, Connor. Hopefully we were not too harsh on you. No, no, dude. I if you came in here being like Connor, you're an idiot. You got to work on this. What are you talking about? I'd be totally fine with that. You know. I, yeah. I, so I, I one last you, question. Go, go, go. Why would you I, be I just, fine I just with that? Something, didn't I? No, no. Sorry, but right. So think about it for a second. Like, why would okay. you be okay with that? I think being able to take criticism is very important, um, and being open to criticism is very important. Um, I think because I've. You know, I'm sure you've all encountered that one person who's maybe doing something self-destructive and you're like, hey, this is not good. And then they lash out for whatever reason. You're like, man, I don't want to be like that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'd, I'd say that that's definitely there, but I'd be a little bit careful about whether that resonates with the way that you talk about yourself. Okay. Right. The way that you think about yourself. Like, oh, yeah, like okay. I'm flawed. I have lots of things wrong <laughs> with me. And so if someone points them out to me, like I'm game with that. And you're, you're right. You're right yeah, that I, taking criticism is important. But anyway, we talked guess, about thick skin. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I definitely think I have pretty pretty thick skin. Um, yeah. Like, I'm I'm willing to, I mean, obviously you have to to some extent when you're online all the time. But it's kind of a weird thing that happened is that when people start, like, nitpicking so many little things, I guess a part of my brain stopped shutting it out instead of being like, well, hold on, let's see if I can kind of yeah. take this all in and use all this to kind of improve myself. Um, and so then I, I stopped seeing, I, 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 now I had to, the thing that I, I'm working on a lot now is, is trying to discern helpful criticism to uh, people who are just trying Beautiful. to yeah. just Sorry, unload, was, you know what I mean? I was memeing a little bit, or not memeing, but I, I should have let it slide. Um, <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, <laughs> Connor, for coming on. And, dude, uh, you know, dude, Trash pleasure, Taste dude. Podcast, everybody should check it, check it out. And thank you. good luck to you, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, re I really appreciate talk uh, you giving me the time today. Yeah, th uh, th thank you pleasure. for coming on. I mean, we, we, it takes two to tango. You yeah, see what I did there? I, I, I swatted away your niceness. You did. You <laughs> did. And I, I said thanks, Matt. God damn. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I did it this time. You said thanks and you were being genuine. And I was like, no, I'm going yeah. to say it, it takes two to tango and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to give it back to you. So I know, yeah. that's, I, I know that backhand. So thanks a lot, Connor. Good luck with Absolute everything. Pleasure, um, and you. yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Bye. Yeah, my, my, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'll leave you to it. Uh, have a great day. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So that. So by the way, like this stuff is very common. Okay. So like this this whole thing. I mean, we talk about normative male alexithymia, but like I mentioned, I don't think it's like men exclusively by any means. It used to be a lot more uh, exclusive to men, but. I think we're seeing in general our society is becoming more alexithymic. And as we become more alexithymic, and th this is also there's been like cultural changes, especially with expectations of women. So what used to happen is that as women have more agency, I don't know if y'all realize this, but we like expect a lot from women. So it's kind of like a, a very, it's it, in a way, very similar problem to men, but it's kind of flipped on its head. Where now like the problem is that you're expected to do everything if you're a woman. And, and the challenge with men is that living up to the expectations that we have as men is becoming increasingly difficult, right? So like the world is changing and you just can't support a family of four on like a single income anymore. Like it's very hard to do. It's hard to make more than your significant other if you're in a heteronormative relationship. If you're a man, it's becoming increasingly difficult as more women become educated and whatnot. And we still hold the, the men to those expectations. The challenge for women 
is that we hold them to all, there's a whole new set of expectations, but oftentimes they get crunched between the two because women are expected to be men now and be women. So you're supposed to have a career and be a boss, be a boss babe, right? And also have kids and like just all the expectations are increasing for women. And for men, what's happening is it's not, I don't know that the expectations are increasing. We have just not adjusted the expectations for the different world that we live in today. So it's hard. But y'all need to be really careful if you do this, okay? That there are two ways to manage emotions. One is to process them internally. I feel something, I'm going to do something internally. The other thing that we can do is shape something in the outside environment to change the way that we feel. I can surround myself by people who are ass kissers. I can cut myself off from people who make me feel bad about myself. And so this is kind of what's happening in our society. And it's kind of scary because we are losing the capacity to moderate and manage our own internal state. So trigger warnings are actually a really good example of this, where people were like, this thing makes me feel a certain way, so I need you to stop saying it. And we should be sensitive to people's triggers. I'm not saying that we should completely ignore them. There's evidence, by the way, that trigger warnings actually don't help anything and actually increase anxiety, which is interesting. They're probably actually harmful, is what the data says right now, but we'll see. But the more devastating thing is that the moment that you stop being able to manage your internal emotional state based on what other people say is the moment that you surrender control of yourself to the outside world. And this is what's happening in our society. We're becoming more fragile because we're not learning emotional regulation skills. And the reason we're not learning emotional regulation skills is because we have a coping mechanism at our fingertips that we've never had before that manages emotions for us. And that, boys and girls, and everything in between is this. Right? I can play eight hours of video games a day, and that manages my emotions. And so we've got to be super careful, because now what we're sort of discovering is, is we, as humans, are getting worse at managing our internal environment. And so we try to shape the external environment. And by the way, like, like the external environment loves this. So now, instead of I feel ugly about myself, let me work on my confidence. Someone's like, oh, you feel ugly? Oh boy, do I have a special cream for you. You can buy this shampoo. You can buy this cream. You can buy these very special pants. They call it shapewear. I don't know if you guys know what shapewear is. It is clothing that artificially constricts part of your body's body. It's like the corset is making a return. That's literally what it is. Went away for a while. And as we've increased body positivity, the amount of shapewear that we're selling is going through the roof. Cosmetic surgery is on the rise. Body positivity, let's accept everyone. Right? It's like body positivity brought to you by a cosmetic company. So this is what's beautiful for them is that as we get worse at managing our internal emotional state, they have something to sell you that will make you feel better. And I think it's a very good idea to start to feel comfortable in your skin. That's awesome. Like, right. So if you're unhappy with something about yourself, by all means, like do healthy stuff around it. But this is what's happening is we're starting to outsource the management of our emotions. And as we outsource it, we lose control to the people that we're giving the power to. So if y'all want to change this, you got to learn how to manage your emotions without fixing something. You don't have to fix something. Right? It's one thing to be, and it's okay to be unhappy with yourself. Right? But that change should be like internal and to a certain degree external. Like if you're unhappy with the way that you look, go and be comfortable in your body. Feel proud of the person that you are. And if you're not capable of doing that, I don't think a particular cream is going to fix that. But by all means, create a body that you can be proud of. That I'm all for. But you have to do the creation. You can't outsource that. 
And this is one of the reasons that I respect people who are in shape the most. Being in shape is the one thing that you can't buy. It's the one thing. You have to put in the effort. You have to restrict your diet. You have to exercise. It's the one thing. No one else can do it for you. And boy, have people tried. They've got all these like devices and stuff that will electro electrically stimulate your abdominal muscles so you can sit on your ass and get a workout. And there are absolutely situations where like financial support is good, right? So you can hire personal trainers. You can even hire personal chefs. You've got like a ton of money. So the, the things you can do, I mean, money helps with that. But it's the one thing that you have to earn yourself. Okay. Cool. Who are you rating, chat? Thank you all to, for coming today. And one last thing. So, um, you know, some of the stuff that we taught, taught uh, Connor today is like we take that approach in coaching. We just to try to understand, okay, like let's understand what's going on inside you. And let's try to figure out if you want to put together the life that you want. This is sort of the core of our coaching program. So if you want to put together the life that you want, the hypothesis, my core hypothesis is that you can you look at as many productivity YouTube videos as you want. But at some point when you translate the advice of others through you, there's an API that connects productivity to you. That API, you can't just download that. It doesn't work. There's an internal component. And that's the thing is we go on searching for answers out there. I want to try this. 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 I went to this person. They said do this. I went to this person. I did this course. I did this. At some point, you got to work on yourself. And that's what our coaching program is designed to do. Help you understand the parts of yourself and how those parts relate to what you want to accomplish in life. So what kind of confuses people is we don't give you like a curriculum. It's not like day one, do this, day two, do this. There's a thousand people that do that. The problem is that you can sign up for a curriculum, but you don't end up doing it anyway. Why is that? And there are some core patterns inside you that we're not really aware of. And that's what we try to address in coaching. Okay. We're going to raid Henya. Um, so this is fun because we're, it's a Friday and, um, we also get to, it's a Friday. So since it's a Friday, we get to like be on when other people are on. So you guys are saying Henya. Is it who, which Henya with lots of, but how, there's lots of Henya the genius. Okay. We're going to raid Henya the Genius because apparently, oh, they're playing um, what looks like Paper Mario, maybe. Or Yoshi's Island? Maybe Yoshi's Island. I can't tell. Henya the Genius it is. Let's go, chat. Happy Friday, everybody. Take care of yourselves and be good. All righty. Raid is incoming. GG. Boom. Boom.